Hello everyone, today we talk about reds and methods of learning uh, for acquiring essentially a historical awareness, expertise, competence, wherever you, you, you wanna, uh, your goals are, because this is also the, the point. Uh, today I will probably be talking fairly a lot because it's, it's a huge topic, it can't be condensated in only one video. Um, before I start I would like to thank a user uh, whose name now I, I, I don't repeat maybe he he doesn't want that but you know he asked me you know the, to he heard me speaking about this in, in another video I was making on commenting the channel and uh, he said you know it would be uh, b beautiful if you could make a video on books then because I'm interested in, uh, in knowing the, the sources that can help for studying so it um, uh, I want to thank him uh, for uh, the appreciation and for the suggestion, which uh, is really is really important for me. I usually don't make videos on demand or uh, you know on, on suggestion, but you know it's because I, in my opinion, especially when it's a, a strictly historical um, uh, topic, I I'm I know I'm going to cover it sometime. But this is instead a bit of more of a methodological slash uh, autobiographical uh, video that uh, is meant to you know give it at least uh, an opinion about this topic because uh, as I was saying before it's such a big topic it can't be covered immediately but I, I can give at least some advice um, in general and um, I, I will be making videos um, also about more specific things like you know so one of sources proper one of mm, historiography proper also about university, how is it learning, uh, how is it learning history, uh, that actually, you know, there is to, to, to n you can profitably narrow down that to, to uh, different uh, subjects, um, that's, um, and, and generally speaking how, you know, that on Schwerpunkt we essentially talk about how to learn, uh, how to see things to learn, and that I think the major message I, I leave you with at, at the end of every video is that, um, history that is essentially what we discuss in here um, is an enormously complex and complicated affair mm -hmm. uh, it, it doesn't just take to read things to or study them to to know you know uh, to, to understand how, how it really was at that point but especially um, history is so varied that this creates really a problem of method that is essentially also what in, in the academies now uh, it's it's really flourishing as a discipline itself. I mean today there are disciplines that are kind of borderline between history, anthropology, uh, philosophy, etc. that are essentially focused on how of thinking the way we think history and the way we should make history and what method ultimately we should use because the method um, is also approximate by definition and history is approximate by definition so that there are um, huge problems in uh, um, approaching history in the first place and that's something you notice also when you you confrontate with with other people because theoretically you can be a kind of a uh, lonely uh, genius like I don't know Rousseau etc having a kind of an education on your own but most of us actually now pass through certain stages of um, what I would call as a sort of social learning that is uh, learning things not just for, for yourself but also together with other people the study together with it that, that is school obviously but university uh, university too I had I never liked university life telling you the truth uh, but not because I didn't like university in itself it's just I, I found that it was kind of staying there learning to the lesson was was a waste of time most uh, most of the times not always uh, it also depended on what the exam was <laughs> what about so this was what there was also this kind of very um, utilitarian uh, approach to the thing but uh, I must try I, I strongly believe and probably this will emerge very clearly from this video that um, the greatest effort you have to make when learning history is trying to be autonomous in um, in your learning because uh, I know it, it, it there, this depends also on the nature of the person and the character um, there are people who uh, like me for instance who and even that this has pros and cons who usually want to do everything on their own they don't want to be back they, they want to follow their own track and and not and they're even annoyed by when someone comes in the way and it naturally it is that the, the, the you understand what, what pros and cons this can entail uh, vice versa are people who are kind of 
uh, followers instead, who like to follow, you know, a certain author, certain thought, a certain current, and kind of um, maybe remaining even independent uh, from it, but uh, however, still following that track that someone else has put, there are people who instead are kind of a, of a bit of the mix of the two, two things. So also in here, it largely depends on so many factors that even uh, go beyond, you know, the, dis the discipline and and whatever. So this should be a video on on books and on reds, but and I prefer the second more as a term now because also you know th there isn't just books out there, and now you understand that we live in a world where even the the physical paper book is something that. Uh, sometimes is uh, discarded or you know something else uh, on, on a digital book or something else. Um, this is also another matter. I, I'm a great uh, I call me a romantic, but I like you know the idea of having this paper book in my hand and uh, uh, looking into the pages and so on. Um, but I'm also a very heavy user of digital di digitalized material. Um, I will explain later how, because I actually have a pretty hefty library now of books. And also, uh, I, I'm kind of obliged to read from 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 the, the in, in digitalized version. But and, and it's not a problem. Also, in here there are pros and cons. Uh, in, in my opinion, even if I have a, a preferences, I I don't want to be a fanatic, or of uh, you know the paper book as such. You know, it's not that bad even to have digitalized books. If anything, because if they are uh, you know, if the text is uh, kind of um, digitalized as well in in characters, uh, you know, you can, um, you know, that's extremely useful for any search you want to do, uh, etc. But I would like to focus on the concept of red in itself, even beyond this trick, the, the, because the question is, you know, why, how, uh, wh what do you usually read? I mean, let, let's leave aside, you know, the, the, the specific question of the user, but uh, I've received actually um, questions uh, from from other people in private when it, since I started Schwerpunkt, and, and obviously also outside, you know, in, in my past life, in university, it's, and et cetera, they told me, what, what, where did you learn these things? Um, or what do you suggest? I mean, what what is that a person should read to to have a uh, to have what? Because this is also a good starting point. Who are you, and what are your interests? Um, this doesn't even need to be explained. We all have different interests. We all have different aims, and also history is not something ob objectively uh, that you can dominate. Uh, I have. Uh, this library of over 9,000 books, mostly about military history. Obviously, I haven't read them all, and I have calculated that I will not leave enough to finish them. So I basically already have a... Uh, this is kind of heartbreaking, so it's kind of depressing. You have only, I don't know, I don't know how many million books have been written in history. I have only 9,000, uh, and I, I think I, I won't leave enough to, um, to finish them all. Um, so the uh, this this gives you sh gives you really a quantitative quantitative dimension of the limitation of your time, um, of your resources, of your potential, and that is already a pretty good indicator uh, that shows you how you have to narrow down for yourself what you want to learn, because it's impossible to know everything, and even a a, a tiny part of you know the world knowledge is already you know a, a huge accomplishment to acquire. Um, this also depends on your age. For instance, when I was very young, like uh, I was still in high school, I thought I had in front of me a, you know, um, a kind of a limitless lifetime to read basically everything, or at least most of the most important works uh, that are out there. At that time, I was particularly fascinated about literature. I read a lot of the Russian classics. I studied, well, English literature at school. I loved um, French, German, Italian literatures, and I was kind of more oriented towards that. Also, I was oriented toward languages. Um, ever since I can remember, I, I was um, also interested in history. At that time, I, I still hadn't clear in my mind. I would basically become a, uh, uh, you know, just uh, I would uh, become a historian. Um, but uh, uh, just an example, when I finished high school and I started studying at university, 
I already uh, realized that uh, in order to, to go on, on with my studies, I had to quit with, with literature that I liked very much. And in fact, basically, I think I don't read a, a book of literature, if not maybe sometimes when I'm um, on vacations from 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 those very times. I mean, I don't have that serial, and and that's that's also pretty sad because objectively there are so many interesting things. I liked very much history of philosophy as well, um, and I hardly ever get the chance to study something about uh, philosophy now. Uh, why? Because I don't have time. Objectively, with with university, I not only need to to study. I, I not only on, not only I needed to study a lot, but uh, I. Um, I also needed to, to rest from that studying so that you can't stay focused with your mind all the day on a book. Uh, it's you know, I think it's scientifically proven that um, even for a very intense professional studying, you can't stay more than two consecutive hours a day studying, which means that on average, that means maybe maybe stay, staying four hours uh, on you know on a chair and then you know being distracted and then uh, getting up going getting something to drink to rest your eyes if you're studying uh, especially in front of a screen and so on which is relatively few but after that you have to refresh your mind you have to let your brain essentially take a breath and and start wor working once again so you're limited and at that point it's also better to do something else and maybe it also entails learning um, objectively I even when I finish studying or researching at this point I, I, I like to read something else I mostly read something else but I realize it's tiring it's an activity I should quit I mean if you really want to do something go go out do sport uh, go go out uh, do something that kind of frees you from from this that lets your brain free and to rest because the brain makes uh, a freaking lot of difficult you know studying burns a freaking lot of calories it, it's something very physical in the essentials in nature you can realize your mind saying your, your head saying come on i will study too much let, let's stop this and it's hard learning is hard it's not something there is not an easy way to learn or better the easiest way to learn is really to study every day and therefore molding shaping your mind to get used to, to get that amount of information uh, and uh, and to you know kind of calculating that in a sort of an economic fashion um, it's um, that's the best so over time you get used to learn and to learn more and then objectively also what you what you learn is forming in your mind uh, you're gonna forget most of what you learn especially after you know your your mind is very fresh to remember lots of things um, uh, especially when you're very very young I mean especially when you are from 11 to 13 years old that's the crucial moment it's like things that you learn for good at that point you it's, it's something you are rarely gonna forget then during most of your high school period you're gonna be yeah, pretty receptive. You're gonna learn lots of things, but you're already your your mind is getting or already lazy. Up to 24 years old, things kind of work. You you're kind of very receptive. Then uh, it's gonna be difficult to remember everything you learn afterwards. It, it's normal. It's typical. Of also, P I'm I'm not very um, I, I'm I'm not an old person myself, but I, you know I, I'm also actually very young, but not extremely young anymore so I, I realize this pretty well that, that I remember certain details about certain things I studied many years ago and then maybe I, I can't even remember what it would have to make an effort to remember what I was learning uh, yesterday and this is perfectly normal it's how we work as humans and you also have to put this into account and uh, timing and biological timing is something you have to take into, into consideration pretty seriously when you're learning because especially when you're young you're you're, you're giving certain things for for granted or better you you don't you don't realize um, um, you know obviously if you keep learning uh, you're gonna be way more uh, you, you're gonna know much more about learning the more the older you are so sometimes you realize that you know, for for instance, I have this recurrent problem that I say, "Oh my God, if I only could go back in time and then instead of playing video games, and I could, I had l read more." Objectively, I don't know how I would be today because maybe those same video games were kind of useful eventually for developing certain interests, or maybe I they gave me a more, uh, I don't know, a, a different dimension of certain things and so on, and other life experiences. But um, 
I personally, this is me, I, I wish I had read much more um, since, uh, you know, my, my uh, you know, I was an early teenager, let's say, that because that was really the moment in which the, the, the things made the difference. And I did read, but I wish I had read way more and that I had especially not wasted so much time doing things that uh, maybe uh, they didn't have any practical consequence even I'm a very skeptical person about the uh, you know the, the effectiveness of um, let's say of education as uh, let's say school and university and at least in the way it's, it's conceived today I mean I'm, I'm actually a, a kind of a conservative th towards the way school and, and university sh uh, should be but at the same time I, I I think of a kind of a a renewal is 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 needed. There has to be some integration, and there should be especially a much a, a greater uh, dynamism and greater, especially towards the end of high school. Well, this is not a, the point now. It's usu usual. Usual. Uh, we will talk about it in another moment. Excuse me, I drink a little before I go on. So reading, and I assume that this video is meant to explain what a person who wants to build a solid historical um, knowledge really needs to, to learn, hmm, to, to acquire it. So this naturally can vary, uh, as I said, but uh, um, uh, I assume um, that's all wha what we, we are interested in, you know, getting this solid historical awareness. Hmm. And, and this is what I see people battling constantly when when uh, learning and also interacting about history, I mean, if you get uh, also on YouTube, but also on Facebook or wherever people, you know, kind of today meet also to, to talk about history, stupid car alarm. <laughs> Damn. Um, they, they kind of, th there is an inner conflictuality, a sort of... Um, uh, of even subtle competition by saying you know I know more you lo you know less but it, and there is kind of a kind of a hierarchy also in the in groups in these debates there is kind of the um, quite empirical um, method you know c quite empirical um, hierarchy that gets formed like saying you know that person is more authoritative is more keen it's more on the spot um, and you people start you know more intelligent people start saying okay well I, I'll follow that person I, I'll give that person my trust especially if that person objectively is someone who knows how to deliver um, informations correctly which is a very very difficult thing to do um, th but I guess that all those people also um, came you know out from a f out of the ranks let's say out, out of the meat grinder in a way because um, I think we all participated to some form of debate of discussion that eventually is very useful to shape our ability to communicate there are people who are ex incredibly cultured and educated but d do not have um, or extremely expert about something that have actually a, 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 a an evident difficulty to explain thems themselves this usually, however, doesn't happen in um, in the field of humanities. There are generally, you know, maybe here I'm giving um, being a bit too um, <laughs> generous because there are many people in the field of humanities that do not know how to explain themselves. But especially in history, I would say, and history is partially above all. Yeah, th th that's 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 it. it. Usually, is you know, is is studied by people who have who acquired through the same studying, through the same learning, a better way of, you know, kind of dealing with the situation and how knowing how to to explain more more objectively. After after all, history has the sake of objectivity uh, as an ultimate end. You know, a, a very few people now, uh, even if they make a mistake, if they if they're biased, if they 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 talk about. They, they make propaganda, they are ideologically oriented, they still um, kind of f mm, try to, to refine their contents for the sake of, of being objective, I mean, of stating certain things to say, okay, th this is this is the sheer facts, let's say, you know, as if, you know, by the way, also the, the idea of fact is, is, is very problematic in itself. Um, so generally, you don't find a person that is openly you know, twisting history by 
changing the essentials. Yeah, it's full of um, con uh, conspiracy theorists out there that uh, you tell that the war is major moral things, like those things that the war was created, that like you know a few, you know a few time ago, and all this history has been invented. There is all a conspiracy for making us believe in all these absurdities. Or it's, it's full of these weirdos. But uh, let's say that those are probably um, in the amount of the average, uh, you know. You know, quantity of quota of mentally disturbed people that uh, can't have this kind of, <laughs> even on historical interests, of course, and and produce such. But because I can't see it in, in other in other terms, obviously, with all the respect for for mentally disturbed people. Um, uh, but let's say that there is a uh, there is a general average of of. Uh, let's say of predisposition of people who learn history to kind of reaching the the, the let's say the, the so-called truth that obviously nobody <laughs> reaches uh, I believe that as I said many times on that the truth does exist the problem is that we have very poor cognitive means and it's often out of reach of them um, so it's um, it, it really um, uh, there is a, a good starting point it's a good starting ground because objectively um, it um, uh, it makes you understand it, it, it there is hope after all though for people to learn and to to have um, you know to, to try to be objective and to reach a sort of a um, level of refinement that is aimed at assessing what what things really were and and uh, or, or at least trying to do it naturally the results are much more um, uncomfortable discomforting in, in many ways um, there is um, hi, hi, the first thing you realize when you study history is that basically everyone has a different opinion. And that is normal, because we all have by default, as human, different opinions, different beliefs, different ideas, and even when we agree, we essentially all look at the thing still from a different perspective than our, our na na neighbor. So this is very important um, also to, to keep in mind. Um, because people, um, uh, this is what what happened to me as well. Uh, when when you start studying history at university, assuming you're interested, you have or, or um, you have, and uh, even if you don't, so you stay out uh, at up to that point to to the university slash academic academic world. You you have an expectation for which essentially. Um, you believe that with inside that world his kind of an omniscient person. Uh, I mean, you're already obviously aware that people cannot know everything, but um, since you still lack a lot of that information, a lot of that um, ideas, you believe that you're, you're concentrated on it, you're concentrated on the process of learning, giving for granted or assuming in some other way that what you learn is coming from a person who have a very solid structured and almost homogeneous view uh, of history that is essentially at the base of what being a, uh, an history expert is, is practically. And you know that there are different specializations, different fields, but you somehow assume that there are certain essentials that everybody has. Or the first thing you, you, you're, you get extremely uh, you know, disconcerted by, at least this is what happened to me. So um, I'm talking now just by myself, but uh, I guess it's um it, it's noticeable so uh, in, in general that, that even professors are objectively quite ignorant people most of the time or better they have this um field of expertise they they specialized in what they, they have their phd in and something like that and basically they ignore all the rest and this goes at very different uh, you know once i wrote to a guy who i, I was i was making a, I, I was writing a paper essentially and i uh, this was a professor. Now I I don't bother with with the, with the details, but basically I, did, I wanted to research the history of a city um, between uh, the uh, uh, years, you know, in forty years of history in the Middle Ages in the fourteenth century. And this guy ans and I asked him essentially for certain bibliographical advice, and this um, person answered me that basically he didn't know. 
and because I should have known that he was expert about you know those uh, next 40 years not those previous 40 years that I asked him about and you know especially you know that wasn't even a a huge topic it was a, just a kind of a relatively small city so if uh, in the 14th century so what kind of an answer was that I mean you you you're letting me believe that considering the relatively scanty sources that exist on that topic you don't know anything about that city 40 years before that uh, you, you're essentially stunning so that you can't provide me with, with any useful information while you know just take maybe to, to google something to, to find a bibliography or that you're you you must have been acquainted with because uh, you know if you are a professor and you teach and you have a, that's um, that's ridiculous and I find literally these things I mean and you you may f think well but you know uh, this is astonishing yes it is uh, I I am a medievalist and you realize that um, most of the professors you talk with not only they naturally have this this you know, they know really only about what they research about. You know, if they study, I don't know, the Mendicant Orders, they don't know anything about economic history, military history, history of I mean, they, they live in their own shell, and essentially they also have a pretty strange view of the Middle Age. And I come from a country where objectively, you know, the academic standards are pretty high. So the... Um, and this is normal, and this is something you met. Uh, you, you realize it happens everywhere. This is a great problem. I mean, at least for me, it is um, philosophically speaking, because obviously we need experts. We need people who specialize into a certain uh, branch in a certain field. But at the same time, and, th and this is something you realize also for many other, uh, basically for all the other disciplines today, uh, even in the scientific field and so on, that we lack uh, consistently. A, a um, you know a consistent amount of generalists that obviously maybe are not so expert about uh, you know ma so many different f um, you know specific fields but at least have a, a, a bit of a comprehensive view of, of of the world matter and I think that historically speaking this is very important because there is the question for instance what is what kind of education we, historical education we want to give. Um, a generalist one, but uh, you know, because you, you, we assume that uh, already a clear picture of, of of a history is given already uh, from from school essentially, but this is evidently not true. I mean, living in the Western world, we realize that the historical awareness of the younger generations, also the older ones, by the way. So let's not say uh, let's not indulge in these cliches in general, but it, it it's dramatically low. I mean, a person who comes out of school doesn't objectively have um, a very consistent idea of what history is uh, that this person might know uh, even a lot of things about history but it's not he's or she is not necessarily able to to criticize it in at a uh, autonomously at the mature level even as a citizen because objectively it's what this is what school is meant to, to, to be I mean what mandatory school is uh, at this point aimed to create people who have war um, uh, self-aware. I mean, they're, they're aware of, of history also from from a civic point of view, like knowing what happened in the past. Because you live in a country that had a history that where certain things happened in the past, you have to be aware. And this is very very difficult to get. And let's leave aside politicization that is naturally spreading, and uh, very much, especially in certain environments. Um, but this is already a problem, so you can't assume that a person who goes to university eventually um, is. Uh, magically um, acquire now a consistent um, consistently better understanding of this world if you ju if the the only level of general history is just like one general history exam at the beginning of the uh, of the degree and then only other kind of ultra specialized um, uh, topics, um, specialistic topics, because this is what happened to me, for instance. I made this uh, first year of university, these um, basic exams that are very, uh, very, very focused, very narrowed down. I, I don't know whether, you know, my country has a specific look at hi history, even kind of a unique historiographical tradition in its... Um, and 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 unique methods 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 of education and teaching, 
even it, for, for Western standards, but I realize elsewhere it's not even like this. I mean, I, I, I'm, I've been listening, for instance, on, on YouTube for, for curiosity of certain um, basic history classes in certain countries whose name uh, that I don't, I don't want to say which they were, but these were allegedly some of the countries who had best, better education standards. That was a joke. That was a joke. If, if that's how you how you teach um, basic history, uh, you're not going to form historians. That's the point. Um, you you're not going to form at least people who are capable of looking at the, the broader picture and being able to to frame their uh, their discipline, their research into it. And this is also another very big problem today, is that the academy is increasingly more oriented towards this hyper-specialization that basically um, uh, pushes for mm, to producing papers, to producing publications, articles, and so on. Uh, the race f for call of papers is probably the most destructive um, phenomenon that ever happened to academy, because this is not anymore about learning, this is about money. And um, it has nothing to do with how education should be. So we have these proliferations of pu of publications on on uh, of articles on so many uh, different uh, tiny things, and you realize that the person from aside from the quality that is ever um, lower, but the the, p the people who write, you realize that they they don't have any other specific interest. Another point: never think to take a degree in history and pretending you you're done with it with learning history or just spending your life without making a, any other research. I believe that uh, a degree in history is valid just as a starting point for a lifetime dedicated to studies because otherwise you're not going to at least you're not going to make a living with that with that degree if that's your objective. Now this is also, another, I'm mixing a lot of things I know and I'm kind of digressing but it's important because even for the Reds, because at least from my from my perspective, that's how I kind of got trapped. After all, I mean, the years of university have been really painful for me, exactly because of this reason. Because I spent months um, uh, uh, studying uh, and and repeating over and over again certain uh, two or three books I had for um, for the uh, the single exam, and I did not and, and I had several exams in advance to 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 pass. And, and I did not have the time to learn what I wanted to learn and those were some of my most important years of university and I spent them studying things, uh, studying subjects that were definitely interesting and were also helpful and uh, naturally on Schwerpunkt many things I also discussed also come from, from, that, from that background. Um, or having studied also th those things to me and this allows me to add details and so on. But for instance, for military history, I had to study everything on my own and in in other times, like sometimes between the bachelor and the master degree, that had these six months um, uh, of time. But at the f or after now, and now I'm doing fortunately a PhD where I could study what what the hell I want uh, to for three years, um, but. It's you know I, s I I feel constantly like I wasted a huge amount of some of the best years of my life of my learning um, potential, S learning things about you know what that professor was specialized in, and 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 uh, albeit interesting albeit uh, mind opening yeah all, all all you like but it was still something I wish I had I hadn't started in, 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 in order to, to to learn something else I, that could be much more useful for me now. Um, this is important because you have to put into account because when you be done with your three, five, or whatever uh, years of university, you will you will notice that you're older, that you have spent those years, that th those years have gone by and, and, and at that point you have to realize what what you want because many people are not into an academic career for instance, they just study these things. I, I know what people might be doing. I personally studied history also uh, for, let's say, not really for particular ambitions. Now, I'm, I'm going on with kind of relatively bright perspectives, but I, I don't have any um, specific interest. I mean, university and learning is al has always been something... University has always been secondary. Learning has always been 
uh, really for me as an individual, I, I, I kept doing it all, all times. But at the same time, also my career is something that comes next to um, other things that I don't know, that my family, my affections, and all this stuff. And that's all obviously me. There are people who focus everything on their career. I'm not like that. But but just for saying, I I, I feel in that case that also a university path is something you have to take into consideration as also in its cons, not just pretending to think into you go to university and you learn history and the history you want and the, the history how you like it. Um, most of the times you're going to be disappointed and you're going to grow this affection with, with what you see and how so how. Um, this idea especially of learning things with other people and for excuse me, for other people and other, um, uh, let's say, um, activities that really you don't feel as your own. Mm. So I'm a great advocate for uh, the necessity of learning as much as possible on your own. Mm. When we talk hi about history especially, um, this, is, uh, this comes pretty much by, by standard, um, meaning that you you objectively history as we've seen can't be understood um i, I mean even if if you spend some years in university you can't learn even a a, a tiny minimal fraction of history so what history I, what, what university is really meant to give you is essentially those structures and m methods that are going to be useful for you uh in order to to absorb to acquire and that other information you're 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 going to use in the past. Also, history in this sense is um, kind of very vague because you know there are um, many uh, related uh, disciplines that are kind of more technical. I mean, if you're an archaeologist, you have to learn of how to do an excavation, for instance. You have to do some other things. If you're a phytologist, if you're a paleographer, um, there are so many different um, uh, techniques. Also, you have to learn and. Um, History is really about everything. I mean, I it's basically you who decides um, what you want to know and what you want to learn. Um, and now I will be stop focusing exactly on, on university, but mm, uh, maybe we will focus now did what you want to read um, on essentially on, on the various stages you, you want to, to, to learn history. So when you're a child, uh, obviously, that really depend mostly depends on your parents or people you grew all you you're raised with, um, and the uh, generally uh, you're very passive in that. I mean, you can learn definitely about many things. Um, I was lucky enough that my parents were uh, kind of people interest, you know, were fairly well acquainted with with history, with uh, with the uh, geography. So they they kind of I kind of got a bit from it. Um, and I, uh, in this sense, I also partly inherited their, their interest I in many ways. So I, I, ever since I can, I can remember, I, I was interested in history. Was int I was surrounded by books. I, I maybe I wasn't as a kid. I wasn't that interested in, in the actual texts and, and having this um, high uh, intellectual thing. I remember that uh, reading was something very very difficult to me I was much more interested in the visual approach and in, into pictures into things and it can also help help objectively the kids to develop uh, a historical a awareness I mean I remember perfectly well all those mm, pictures all these those illustrations from from books I had when I was little even maps I could spend literally hours staring at a map and uh, looking at it. I love geography and and by the way um, erase from your mind to learn history if you don't know geography it's useless you know literally if you hate geography don't don't study history it's useless you're not going to go anywhere by definition um, but aside from this um, at that point I still lacked obviously a kind of thorough uh, education I wish I had read more for instance so uh, if you're a parent for instance and you think your your kids are you're gonna be interested in these topics. L kind of never, never force them to read, obviously, because that's kind of use useless. It's gonna backfire. Um, and uh, but um, trying to, you know, to acquaint them with with the idea of the book as a kind of a container, some mm, 
magical knowledge that is gonna be extremely useful, and which is the truth, by the way, um, because um, not all kids are objectively p maybe they're they're they receive books and gifts and stuff like that, but they don't quite understand what they're supposed to 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 do with it. Um, many parents assume that their kids, I don't know, are gonna learn by themselves. No, they they need a guide. Of of course, they're gonna learn by themselves in the sense that the process, the the, the mental process it takes for them to, to arrive step by step is gonna uh, is gonna be on on them, uh, and that's valid for everybody. But if 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 you as a parent already kn you've already been there, you already know what it's practically about. Try to, to, to represent a guide towards those contents, also not just you know telling them the story that is read in there. Um, f time to, to, to get them used to, to, even to the idea of reading as such, as a pleasure, that is something difficult, something also tiring, but it's something useful, it's nice, because you can eventually know so many things um, about those characters in, in books or um, uh, try to engage them a, a little bit like that. And then school, at that time, especially for history, you know, I don't think that children have such a, a great historical um, understanding of their, you know, of course children can be very, there, there are many children that, that understand history kind of well, but uh, sometimes they're, mm, maybe they're just interested in other things, first of all. And they do not develop immediately, especially that um, idea of you know different times and spaces that is actually the, at the base of, of the historical reasoning. But they're gonna acquire it. I personally was very. I remember I um, I liked history a lot, and most of my uh, interests when I, when I was a kid were revolved around historical settings and so on. So I, I got used to, to certain ideas, to the idea of times. It was uh, in fact kind of uh, schematic, kind of um, simplistic, but at least th there was something in it. Then when the uh, the person is ages, and that point, uh, especially from you know the the, 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 fi the sixth grade on onwards, it, you, you you start transitioning, you start becoming a uh, an adult. I mean, you start taking that path for which you we already have a mind that can apply itself to to kind of more complex things and that's also where the problems with school usually with learning start happening because at that point you start to have to kind of render in terms of also of uh, intellectual activity and result and, and so on so it's um, it's really um, at, uh, that's a really crucial point because many many kids at that age get kind of disaffection um, they start seeing th they start approaching their their first um, scholastic failures, and they can get discouraged and take wrong paths and so on, and, and losing time and losing resources. And that's a very an extremely precious moment in in a in a person's education. It's a crucial moment in a person's education, and mm, that's where also parents should s also try to follow their kids. Not saying, oh, now they're old enough, they can do things on their own. It, it's not really like that. You still have to help them in my opinion. And and when it comes to history at that point, the person starts knowing um, different things, um, also from other, uh, you know, from their schoolmates, from other people. And, and history starts getting also quite rather political. Uh, at usually at that age, kids are uh, very receptive and, uh, and sensitive to, to what especially their parents think like. You know, if, if you if you have a political opinion, you start your kids to hear your kids essentially saying certain things you should uh, about politics. You most likely it's, it's they're repeating what they have heard from you, or maybe even extremizing it because also in there the psychological um, situation is very complex and there are so many things going on. Um, that's however the point where I think reading uh, should get a bit more into uh, into play as an active. Um, um, tool to you know help the, the the kid kind of working on his uh, his or own, but uh, uh, at the same time it's still something you can give them to read in practice. So that's a, a beautiful age to s to make them read certain books that obviously every person has different tastes and so on. But when it comes to history, you can. I don't know. Make them read. Um, there are so many things for kids that, that, uh, that 
history books for kids, but even something more complex like uh, like uh, certain sources, obviously translated if it's possible for for other languages or or certain biographies. There can be nice, you know, if they're just the, mm, um, you know disclosure works, um, things that make people acquainted. That's that's gonna be pretty useful. I, I would say even movies or video games that are historically themed can be actually very interesting to to attract a person towards that direction. Mm. Obviously, <laughs> you know, it sounds like a, we're, we're conspirators that we have to make kids learn in history, but objectively, I think, if anything, it's a good conspiracy now. <laughs> um, and Because history is really important. Also, traveling is dramatically cr important for, for history because um, you know, especially when uh, when you learn about a certain place and then you see how it is and you know how to contextualize it, it that's gonna be beautiful. I fortunately had this these opportunities, and I remember that certain countries uh, at that age, especially my uh, teenager, uh, I remained in, in my heart as a part of myself, also because I had read and I knew certain things about that history. Think, but this can work also for for for, for more kids. I remember. Um, also with my parents, we, we went around and then you know, they told me just think about what there was here at the time, there was this character, th those are things that will remain always in my heart because um, it's as if that, that history at that point had been a, a part of me and it, and it is definitely part of me, had been mine and um, and, and it was a part of my life that I cannot uh, exclude, and that's partly the reason why, objectively, I decided to study history in spite of all, in spite of everything that I could have done, and I, I also did try to do it at a point. Now, if you're a teenager, so if now probably some of you also are listening to me are that age, and I see it from the YouTube uh, stats, so now we stop talking to parents, we start talking to, to teenagers directly, and so wh what I what is that you can read, historically speaking, can form your... Well, mm, I believe that at your age it's uh, really uh, great to approach history a bit um, from everything. I mean, it doesn't have to be necessarily, you know, uh, in the only very heavy books about it. Because I remember when, at that age, I used to read them, but sometimes they were difficult, and sometimes I was more anxious to say that they had finished to read a book than actually trying to, to, to stop there and understanding it. So sometimes at, at that age it's, it's good to start looking around, really, even on the internet that I would say, you know, many people criticize the internet, they say it's a war, of, you know, it's a bad thing. Uh, watch Schwerpunkt, by the way. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But it, y it is true that there is good historical content on the internet, even at that age, I, I would say is even the English Wikipedia is not that bad. Objective, if you want to get acquainted with certain characters, with certain phases in, his in history, because this is really the point. At that age, uh, the person sh uh, it, you should be able to already structure a pretty solid, you know, um, time and space uh, dimension in, into history. I mean, and that's the probably an age where. You're going to learn things that are, are going to um, impress you the most. They're going where the, the process of discovery is going to leave a deeper mark into you. So if, if if at that point you watch movies, you read books, you you go in an online, um, you ask I don't know your your family, your friends, your your teachers, or something like that, and it, you you're going to discover a world of and that that was my age when I was between 15, 16 years old. I I remember I. I, I started discovering so many things, also thanks to school. I remember I had very good um, uh, professors at the time, not just about history, but maybe not excessively about history, but th at that age I fell in love with the history of philosophy, for instance. It kind of became, I can't say a reason of life, because it would be too much, but it kind of opened my mind in a way that I, uh, I started thinking that the knowledge was such a precious thing to acquire, and that's the best way you should, you know, keep on with the good work, if especially if you're being always uh, a person who has read, who is, you know, quite ca been interested in um, kind of proficient in, in, in certain, um, in these uh, topics, it, it, it's, it, it's good. Obviously, uh, this in, at, at that age, I think that the best thing is really to learn everything. I mean, there, there, is, an, there is always the favorite subject at school, but um, at that point, learning maths, 
learning chemistry, learning physics is as important uh, as learning history. They're, uh, there isn't, uh, they're, they're complementary. They, they walk all together. So it's not um, something you, you can't exclude one uh, piece of, of the thing because if you want to be a complete uh, um, person, a mature person, when you, you finish your, your high school at 18, uh, to 19, whatever it is, um, you 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 can know so many things that you uh, you can decide kind of more consciously consciously what what you want to do afterwards. Mm. So if you want to continue studying history naturally and uh, reading uh, is, is at this point is not an option. You have to do it, um, not even for the sake of it, but um, but because it it should be at that point something like uh, breathing. You know, uh, reading should be a kind of culture. You should get used to read, not just about history, about everything at that point. Excuse me, I drink a little bit. If you if you have not been used to it, don't don't get discouraged because that's an age where you still ca you still can achieve amazing results. You also have uh, uh, at the end. Uh, at the end of your teenagers, very you're also very energetic as as an individual. You can do so many things. There is nothing that scares you. Um, it you you can uh, embark yourself into these kind of enterprises that are that can bring you very very far away. I I myself started studying history uh, properly um, very late in time. I mean, before my I was 19 when I decided. I wanted to study history, and and I started taking lots of books on hi on history specifically, and reading them. And these were kind of general books about different topics. Like I don't remember, I was studying, uh, oh, you know, this topic. You know, it's full of different books and rants. And this is also probably the most difficult part of the video because um, I can't properly tell you what you should read. There were many disclosure books um, that you can find um, around but uh, today we are fortunate we're, we're lucky enough to have so many books online as well um, some of them are a bit dated um, meaning that they're a bit old but uh, they're, they're being essentially open to to public now that because the, the copyright thing after a, to a certain amount of years basically exp expire so that they're being published by many many different sites they're not difficult to, to find it at all they usually in PDF um, there is archive.org uh, it's full of that um, there is also Google who makes uh, Google books something like that. I don't remember you know it, it's full of that you know it doesn't take much to search for it just be aware that there are so many books on the internet and that you can find them and if you want a base uh, to build a base on a certain topic whatever it is historically just start from those because objectively uh, these books can be old, but they're not so enormously different from what we still know today. I mean, at that age, you sh uh, your 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 goal, in my opinion, should be to structure this kind of serial uh, knowledge by knowing that certain parts of history existed I in the first place. That's probably the most important thing. It's not even ab about being. You ha you have to shape up. You have for 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 a university for a scientific education. So at that point, it's it's very very important that you that you keep up with your studies by essentially structuring your bases together with um together with what you're learning if you started studying that at college uh, or at university. Um. At that point, however, college and university are gonna become demanding, so you will enter into this kind of uh, uh, magically depressing world of, of uh, you know preparing exams, attending classes that I personally always found extremely boring. Uh, uh, many of my colleagues found a university a university to be a social occasion. I found it uh, to be extremely boring instead. I never liked to stay there at university. I always get out, got out of there as much as I could. To to read books on my own, and a uh, university now, uh, as I said, I will kind of dedicate another video to to it. I already discussed and said something now before, but um, is a world that 
in my opinion, as a historian, shouldn't be your your whole universe, even if it's called university, um, because um, in your field, in in history, uh, all that matters really is what you build on your own. Um, as I was saying before, university can give you certain bases, certain expertise. There are certain subjects that are kind of neat that you know. For instance, I studied against my will <laughs> because I was obliged to do it. Um, a lot of paleography. And and I was n today. I'm kind of glad to have studied it, but that's a very technical subject, for instance, and and that's something that if you don't attend university objectively, I it's not very easy to to learn. So you should take um, you know this years of university is a bit of sacrifice to perfect your skills a as a historian, and to to get those tools that are necessary for you to understand more of history. But in your uh, private life you should read on your own and learn mostly on your own a person who goes to university thinking today that that's all it takes to, to become a historian meaning that to, to, to have a culture on your own is completely mistaken and uh, in fact I also find despicable this idea of saying you know I've got a degree in history so that is a sheet of paper that tells, tells you you're a historian and then you see that person stop stopping to to read history, to, to, to get interested thoroughly into it. You know, if, if you need a, a, a degree, uh, a title to, to, to find a better job, to, to, to go on with a career, it, it's fine, it's perfectly fine, I understand it. But don't, don't believe that that's enough to be a historian, because you're a historian only if you dedicate a lifetime to the study of a history, and, and that's something that doesn't handle with university. Uni university is just a tiny bit of the wall. Uh, of the world path. Um, so at that point, w what do you read? Because um, objectively, this is probably the most the most important thing um, in, in, in how do I get sources uh, right? How do I acquire this um, solid historical knowledge that uh, provides you with w provides me with. Uh, such certainties, you know, especially in your early twenties. I mean, this was for me the case. Uh, very early twenties, I all I wanted was to basically find a reliable information. Um, and in history, reliable information is everything because it's essentially the criterion in which uh, the um, in fact the the the, the, ac the historical accuracy is is based on. I mean, you have to have to to base your your opinions on on evidence and um, this is also a very complicated passage because naturally e evidence can be interpreted in different ways and arguably most of history is practically based on this especially today where most of you know the major fields in history are, have been saturated mm. there are many people today who basically don't even choose topics that they like but they rather uh, go hunting for uh, fields that are been relatively not explored to say, oh well, I was the first one who who did it, and it's a very commercial attitude. And I'm not saying it's bad because also history is n naturally driven by such kind of a, you know interests that have to put into account. You you have to kind of work with this, um, and and therefore you have to exploit opportunities and so on. But at the same time, it's it, it's it's just like this this. Um, short shots let's say this idea that you you have to make your bachelor thesis or master thesis your phd onto something just to show that you're clever you're smart you've covered a a a, a an area that you that that others that didn't but um what about history in itself i mean the idea that you you want really to to structure your knowledge heavily on so many different topics and not just that narrow um topic you you did uh, naturally, if you have some academic am ambitions, never do what what I did, for instance, because I uh, I had this brilliant idea of um, changing topic, uh, kind of radically topic at every thesis I had to write. Uh, I started with a bachelor thesis on Longobard history, then I make a, a thesis on a master thesis on a German battle of the 13th century. Then I'm doing a PhD on the Italian communal armies in the 14th century. So basically, I passed from um, so very different um, uh, topics one to another. Most of people who reach uh, this PhD level have a completely different um, background. They usually started very thoroughly uh, to analyze one uh, topic since the bachelor thesis and deepen in it 
uh, during the master uh, thesis and then uh, bringing it f f as far as a PhD and therefore consolidating definitely. I, I did the, the worst marginal thing <laughs> in this sense because up to one uh, years and a half ago I didn't objectively know uh, an excessive much about what I'm currently researching um, and um, I, I felt I've, I've lost kind of a lot of time and I realized that there is something, you know, I spent the whole first year, for instance, kind of catching up with the bibliography that I didn't know I had. But at the same time, I mean, I, mean, I have this edge because, um, first of all, I'm, I'm also very probably mm, exceptional case in because I'm not being followed by any expert on the field I'm researching on, which is madness. Because the PhD is such a serious, demanding thing that, you know, you need a guide. Well, I had this brilliant idea that uh, not only I uh, I didn't need it, but uh, objectively that I had to study something in a department where nobody was expert on it. Um, so this this has kind of uh, I don't know how I will bring an end. I will take this to an end because <laughs> it's going to be dramatic. I've already been writing quite a lot at this point, but um, I realized that uh, a different for me, uh, you know. Um, consolidation uh, is uh, of of the knowledge you're you're going to spend is is necessary. So if you want to start this career, um, my advice is really to and I I know it's hard and I I don't even know whether it's um let let let's say that erase the, the word advice. I, I'm not advising it, but I, I I'm just telling you my perspective uh, right now. In my research, I I would be much more um, you know productive if I had started to to learn about my current topic since the bachelor thesis at least because right now um, everything is much more complicated uh, I know I, there are certain colleagues of mine that did something rel relatively similar but they kind of remain always in, in, in a kind of you know, similar times and spaces. Objectively, even my master thesis and my PhD uh, are not so completely unrelated. In fact, I would like to do hopefully a postdoc on, on kind of mixing big the, the topics of the uh, master thesis and the PhD, for instance. That at this point I started to understand <laughs> how it works, so I'm trying to to exploit it. But um, um, I, I wish I had, let's say, had more. Um, more uh, had been more educated in that specific field. On the other hand, I'm sure, I'm really sure that there are other people who have done instead what I wish I had done. Would say, you know, I wish I had expanded into other fields. I wish I had um, covered more topics. I would have. I wish I had had a broader view o of this. So and I understand that. And and the way you, the only way you can do it, you have to imagine it like this. It's like. Um, reading and learning about history in general aside from what you do on, on in your career is is crucial because as a historian it's crucial because it's as if it, it fluidified your um, your knowledge I mean um, even you know as a medievalist for instance I realized that um, learning about um, I don't know con the contemporary age or the, the ancient times or modern age it, it is fundamental for my medieval for the understanding of the Middle Ages and I'm not kidding I mean uh, I, I'm, I'm a really a great supporter of the idea you can't ignore uh, you know the rest of history just because you, you focus on just on one topic it's damaging you're not going to be a good historian you might be more ignorant than others on certain specific topics but at least you might know a, a freaking lots of things about other topics. For, for instance, when I talk with my colleagues, that are, I, I usually, um, my, my PhD colleagues, are, I consider them kind of way more, um, it's like better educated than me, also by family extraction and, and, and kind of... Um, they they are people, for instance, who are extremely well acquainted to historiography, which I'm not. I'm, I'm extremely lazy, and also I, I've never been interested in reading what other people read, um, unless I wasn't, you know, answering a question. Uh, I, I wasn't trying to, to find an answer to, to certain things, so I, I had to look at what others had already answered. I mean, I don't like to take historiography as, uh, you know, my favorite uh, 
time read. I, I like to read books, for instance, are history books that are very... Um, they, they stick to, to the story, you know, not to the view of the story. You know, that they give me really how this this was. Naturally, that's also a historiographical perspective because naturally every, every historian adds up to that. But... Um, when I talk with these people, they're extremely more cultured, even on, on general knowledge, than me. Sometimes I realize that they absolutely know nothing, and when, when I say nothing, I really mean nothing, about other topics, like some of them are medievalists, most of them are medievalists. Um, when, I, when I talk about them, this, um, you, know, uh, you know, even about a, a country, uh, or uh, in the same period that they're studying, that, that it's not the country that they're they're concentrating their research on, they know literally nothing. I did read even a few, really, even a few. So I'm not an expert. I'm not in you know a person who went so much in depth to, to those topics. But at least I know what we're talking about. I know generally speaking how the things. W how this word was connected. Even on Schwerpunkt, you, you realize that I make lots of videos that tend to to present this broader perspective. And these are usually things that you learn uh, in the very first exams of university. But these very first exams are kind of jokes because the students are normally coming from, um, uh, you know, from, let's say, uh, fresh from, from the school, so from kind of not uh, such a structure a structural knowledge um, that uh, that allows them to, to be particularly critical or aware about history. Some of these courses naturally are um, attended also by uh, people who are not going to, to, to continue their studies in that specific subject. Let's say if you are a modernist, um, at the beginning of your um, you know, your, your university career you will be doing these exams on hopefully on the medieval history and contemporary history and so on, but it's something you basically abandon. So even the um, your interest is slower, this basically uh, makes the, the class, the general um, class uh, commitment into the topic kind of lower. At the exams the, the professors know that this lowers the, the, the average of the um, also of the answers of, of, of the uh, you know uh, of the profit of that examination and 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 this brings essentially uh, on average people to um, to forget very easily over time the um, those um, general perspectives that uh, they 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 would have been you know that they're supposed to have learned at that point through those exams and and certain manuals manuals are also dramatically important to learn history um, uh, at the beginning you don't realize it but um, for instance I came back many times on my manuals some some manuals are very poorly written uh, objectively and I've seen certain manuals also used in different countries and I don't like most of them at all um, the best manuals are I mean just to pass that exam you can also have something very schematic L really knowing dates and names and a bit of narrative is it's it's enough but then there are certain manuals that are written especially by those professors of the older generations that really had a a whole omnicomprehensive idea of, of of the middle ages something we don't have anymore because we lack that perspective we got increasingly specialized but we didn't retain this broader look at you know up to a few generations ago at least uh, but this is, I know, by sure, it, it's present in many countries in uh, all over the West. There were professors who actually n had covered really all the sources of a, I mean, all the or the major literary sources etc., of the world Middle Ages. They they knew that far, that much, and they, and, th and in those times they had gone to university to become cultured people, to become erudites. Sometimes his um, a university is completely different. These people are either dead or they're. Uh, retired now and they can't provide that information anymore but sometimes they wrote certain manuals that you read and that they really open your eyes on on the uh, on the middle ages and I mean uh, middle ages in, in, in my field in this case but you know this this is present naturally also in other in other um, for other years albeit indeed and there is a great difference between the various eras because objectively uh, uh, 
uh, this is self-evidence. I mean, with the Middle Ages, you there are certain amount of so w you can't do with the Middle Ages, but you what you can do with m contemporary history objectively, uh, or better vice versa. You can't do with contemporary history what you can't do with the Middle Ages because at that point in contemporary history, I don't know. I think that it doesn't exist uh, even a person who has covered the wall sources that have been produced in the Vietnam War, for instance. <laughs> you can't think about the world contemporary era, so. Um, these are things you have to keep in mind. So in in, in this, I cannot help excessively. I, I can't tell you naturally what a way they got um, when talking about people who were of other, you know, studying other eras, other times, and also other disciplines that had to do with 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 history in general. Um, so maybe I will dedicate a video to to that as well because you realize, at least for, from my perspective. Um, that I, I, I try to ca to keep general, so not really, you know, I don't consider myself a medievalist proper in the sense that I consider m myself more a military historian, or historian of, of the art of warfare that has this more diachronic um, approach to history than anything. You know, what are the, the kind of the optical distortions, if you want, that you get when um, you, um, you, you approach history from a certain discipline for a certain perspective that, that is also very important but mm, at least for me as we're saying now it, it, a, a really big thing of being a successful historian is I mean as not in terms of career but in terms of knowledge of awareness uh, there are unfortunately often two separated things um, is, is really to learn as much as you can about the rest of the world and especially if you're going to get in a university and eventually an academic career, you're not going to have, unfortunately, all the time in the world for doing this. Because objectively, when when you you research and uh, you you don't have time to read else, um, and and this is what I was telling you before that I regret sometimes having taken this path because I can't read fully all I like. You you expect you know oh, you're a historian you 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 probably get nauseated about history. No, it's it's the older way around. It's 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 completely different. You you on the contrary, I have a huge anxiety not to be able to to learn enough because I have to concentrate only on certain specific things. And studying is very different different from reading. Mm -hmm. Also, in here, um, when you are a historian, you go to to university, you learn. You uh, objectively it doesn't mean that you ha you are better or more educated than someone who is um, was not. Sometimes I found. Some uh, people who were, I don't know, engineers or economists or poli political scientists uh, that had actually a very solid historical knowledge and understanding, and actually they've been they had been helped by their own uh, background because history is the history of literally everything. It's there is not you know when you study history you said you study the whole human spectrum, so you can definitely be a engineering uh, engineer historian if you want you know th that has some advantages and actually these multidisciplinary approaches are very very um, very important sometimes because they can provide definitely a uh, but but the, the real problem here at this point is um, that most people that naturally didn't have a university education um, do not understand certain things, um, and this is not. This is really related. Uh, this is really speaking on average, as I just said. I mean, there are people who are exceptionally smart and intelligent and bright, and were able to cover that they're polymaths essentially, and they embody a little bit that model I was talking to you before. I mean, the, the omniscient uh, scholar that uh, basically um, knows everything uh, about so many many things. But the average person objectively is going to have difficulties to understand certain historical things about if hasn't gone through a uh, a university career, and I hate to to say this because objectively I don't want to discourage anyone who hasn't gone through that saying, "Ah, oh, you're not a historian, you don't have a degree in history, and I do, so you d you know less." Now this is probably the most stupid thing you can say. Um, most of historians are actually extremely ignorant persons. Uh, when it comes to history, so never take uh, anyone, not even a university history professor, um, as a person who knows history as such. I, I've met countless history professors from all over the world who were ignorant as goats, and they were not good professors at all. 
Um, so, um, but on average, it, it's obvious that studying history at university at least exists um, is an option that is out there for a reason. And uh, uh, and and it does help you. And I think the most important moment in there is objectively not when, in fact, you study those for for the exams um, that are very useful and they contribute to strengthen your your knowledge, your awareness, and so on. But it's rather you know the uh, writing of the thesis. I definitely will make a video on how to write a thesis. But the thesis is crucial because the thesis it doesn't teach you yet just to be a um, uh, an actor to go there in front of a professor um, showing that proving that you have studied and you, that you have read those books you try to understand because when you write a thesis you write you actually have a, it's one of the very few chances in your life say it in this way to to write something that is truly your own mm -hmm. so there are many people that even try to copy thesis and stuff like that that's pretty stupid to do because that's an opportunity you have to really do something that is yours in your life and that someone is someone else going to read perhaps if you decide to publish it although that's not maybe and uh, why why not doing something autonomous well that's a very important moment because that's the moment in which you work with sources and you actually understand what the historical problems are about. Uh, there is the internet generation that now got passionate about history just by reading things on the internet. It's completely fine. I already advised you before th that the internet is also a um, a very good mean um, uh, of uh, historical to to learn history. It's actually plenty plenty of very good contents out there. You know, it's obvious that. Um, even myself and Schwerpunkt, I uh, bitterly criticize sometimes the quality of of lots of things that are out there. But um, objectively, it's plenty of, of good of good uh, material, historical material. Uh, the real problem is that the average person that approaches that contents is not able to evaluate them. And I know that um, when you don't get a certain historical degree of historical awareness of uh, of criticism, you are objectively uh, not understanding what this really means. Uh, I remember when I heard this phrase, you know, not being able to assess to evaluate the historical accuracy of something. Uh, I thought it was ah uh, well, but I can do it alone. I can make it. Yeah. Then when you when you age, when you you know banged your your hand over the, you know those. <laughs> papers when you were writing your test and so on, you, you do realize objectively what those words meant. They uh, all of a sudden acquired this kind of color of, 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 uh, of life and uh, you understand that, that what the problem is. That until you don't understand how difficult it is to criticize a source, to, to uh, confront it with others, to, to form an original idea, to know how many opinions have been expressed on this problem, you have no idea what history is about. Many people approach history w as, it w as if it was a story that was already written. When I was in high school, I, for instance, I, I was aware already of certain historical problems, but I assumed that history was more or less uh, that thing that was being written, and I also believed, naturally knowing less than today, that it was much less to know. Mm. Another terrible thing is the disorient the complete disorientation, the, the completely the complete insignificance you 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 feel when you realize finally how much there is to know and you that you will never be able to know because you will uh, uh, you you will die before you will achieve even a, a tiny part of that and that's depressing that's really depressing and also but that also teaches you uh, very much and therefore the thesis is the moment in which you can um, see really what sources and and bibliography mean um, and and it can really make you understand how history is on the contrary extremely fluid extremely vast and complicated and uh, and really uh, you know uh, seeing the problems by yourself because the problem is that you have to solve those problems so it just it just doesn't say uh, you know I, I just pass by 
yeah, I've read about this, I've heard about this, and I know that's a problem, but hey, I have my own opinion, I know better. No. When you have to write a thesis, you have to take responsibility for what you write. If you write uh, rubbish, you're gonna pay for it, essentially. So, um, uh, this is also very useful about history, is that when you write, you usually, yeah, you can do it on your own, but someone else is gonna read it. So it's like when you, I, I speak on Schwerpunkt, I always try to, you know, to reduce to the minimum the um, the specificity is because at that point it, it there is always someone who can come to say okay but here and it's very complicated um, so even historical material that you find on the internet sometimes you should be able to understand it's um, kind of um, you should question where that 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 synthesis for instance comes from where the what the bases are because history now is sometimes at, at large I think uh, on the internet uh, taught like kind of in a meme like form mm. when I uh, you know up to a few years ago and uh, you found for instance m many more blogs many more sites uh, with lots of more written thing now there is a kind of a more visual approach with jokes with memes with puppets with you know, stuff stuff like that, and it's. I think it dumps down the, the quality of of the learning. I mean, some of this material is actually very clever, but it's more based on. Uh, it, it puts more emphasis on the joke of uh, certain historical cliches, rather than, you know, trying to help people to have an autonomous uh, understanding of history. And that's why I also partly started Schwerpunkt because I believe that um, uh, I objectively am, I, I I suck at you know, explaining now <laughs> what you should read, because I'm talking about everything but uh, but that, practically. But mm, I believe that um, um, certain things are better told, uh, are better understood what you actually look into history proper than actually explain. Because also certain processes uh, are very theoretical up in, in, and they're going to be relatively insignificant and meaningless in your mind until you basically don't, don't them stu stumbling to them and you, you, you realize that they are important, they are meaningful and this happens in, in life in general I mean when you age you objectively realize there are so many problems, life is much more complicated than what you expected before simply because you got acquainted with those problems and, and you have to, to deal with them, you have to cope with them and this poses lots of pressure did because it's not easy to, to cope the thing with, with the thing but at the same time you realize that that gives you an edge it gives you more wisdom it gives you more uh, tools to, to cope with that situation and that's very very important to understand to um, in order to to live on and to do something meaningful and, and productive um, so I don't remember where I, where I was going with this but um, uh, here is also the advice for you know, the large majority of people that I assume are also the ones who follow me um, on Schwerpunkt is, you know, people who declaratively um, uh, don't have time to learn history proper. I mean, I, I've had some comments of people that said to me, you know, thanks for making this this content, in spite of all the problems, the fact that your uh, language is, is the way it is, that uh, there is not much of a visual content and you, it's just you talking for many hours, it can be even difficult to follow, but thank you for doing it, because um, for, for people like me, that um, for people like us that um, do not have time to, to study history, and that we're not acquainted, we're not historians, but uh, this is very meaningful to us because it, it shows, it, 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 it's as if uh, you brought from f to the other side uh, certain things that objectively you, you don't hear much around because maybe they remain confined into the, uh, you know, the university departments, into the academy, they remain confined to, sp you know, just uh, I I in the milieu of specialists, etc. And this is what I'm doing, in fact, on Schwerpunkt. It's basically disclosure about topics that are actually out there and that are actually also m usually much more complicated than how I expose them. That, however, given the average you can find on the internet, are very complicated and, uh, and deep and so on. Then I'm sure sooner or later that, that you will start finding ex extremely, um, you know, sophisticated and materi material and so on. But um, it's. Um, uh, maybe not now, and I, I'm, c I'm trying to kind of fill in this niche because I, I believe it's an opportunity. It's also very economical in uh, also in here as as an objective. But I also believe that 
in general talking about history is the first it's the first way to to get it right in fact i believe it doesn't really matter to you know i sometimes i'm very curious intellectually and sometimes i wish how i i, I would see the world and conceive the world if i had read more and instead if i had interacted with people less that would be very curious because um considering the time that you know the unnecessary time i interacted with other people with i, I um, interacted with other people and i realized uh, let's assume i spent it reading so not confrontating with others but kind of learning more um i still don't know how it would be uh whether i would be a kind of a uh, you know it, it would have been better or worse but um over the years however i noticed that as hard as it can be debate discussion even arguments sometimes and ge more generally a, a dialogue with other people um when discussing history is fundamental and not much because i mean at the beginning of course you're gonna mostly learn from others that came before you so you know you especially if you're younger and uh, it doesn't necessarily I mean there, there are many young people who are naturally way more educated than older people this is pretty evident but generally speaking you know when you still help to learn there's always someone you kind of learn from uh, we we don't uh, fortunately even uh, even for a person like me that doesn't like to follow others objectively what do I know is because other people wrote about it so I'm you know largely humans repeat what others have uh, have told them and this is normal uh, at the same time so that even when you search for something new you can't properly distinguish the, the two um, things and your your vision is of the world is going to be always influenced by other people other people's thoughts um but um, uh, relatively to debates argument reflections and so on you realize you acquire a lot of knowledge not just from the sheer um information you 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 you, you get you learn like i don't know i never heard about this now i know and i will treasure it as, as an information but also and very importantly you realize how people approach history that is how and it is it's finding extremely fascinating and i i love it i could write a book about it i i, I one day i, I will do that is how people react to to others when they and, and how they think history and it's fantastic when you get a bit older a bit more experienced and you start understanding since you know actually fair a lot about a specific topic how other people who know even less about it think it and this is very important i think it w today it's not a field um uh, that um you know probably produced much in it I, I i at least i'm not aware of many um you know of studies that uh, yeah there are many sociological studies naturally that try to look at how people look at history but th th they keep it general um, I'm kind of a, uh, <laughs> a more sadistic person I like to to really expose sometimes w um, certain thoughts and certain ideas for the way they are produced and and, and trying to guess why they were uh, produced uh, a banal consideration that I, I don't like for instance um, stereotypes and cliches of course but um sometimes it's very interesting to see how different nationalities have different perspectives on certain historical topics or simply how they use certain narratives even certain words certain expressions um i for reasons that now i won't explain i've been kind of interacting with people f from many countries um non schwerpunkt actually and i realized that you can't uh, over time you can start understanding what a person from a particular background is going to reason like or to approach that specific topic like um so i think that re there are kind of stages of uh, historical wisdom we could say not even historical knowledge but you know this idea of wisdom proper meant as you know li listen to what the others have to say and react differently um, for instance, uh, s sometimes it happens. I, I I create because I like to discuss history. But um, uh, I um, for several years I, I had a, f a fake Facebook account. I used to make kind of even the dumbest historical questions that I, uh, on certain Facebook groups that I could ever imagine. Um, I, in within groups, there were actually fairly good. It's very difficult to find a good um, a Facebook group. You know, with kind of really you know 
uh, oh wow I should make a video on, on fa history of Facebook groups that would be ter terrific well because it's so funny in, in um, it, there are so many interesting things you can learn from that but uh, making you know th those specific those stupid questions just to see how people try to make you understand certain things because sometimes we, you know, one thing that happens is that people fear to expose themselves by making questions that I um, uh, that they think they would be judged for so sometimes I did this kind of thing um, myself because objectively I have so many historical questions myself sometimes and I want to hear other people's opinion because I realize that objectively other hearing other people's opinion is is useful not much because you at, at, at a certain point you, you get new information but because you can kind of measure at, at which point you are compared to other people uh, for instance, for many years I've been posting stuff on uh, certain, you know, uh, kind of history-themed um, articles uh, on, uh, I mean, articles that were just Facebook posts, but they were rather long, uh, on certain history groups, and and I even intervening in debates and so on. Then, then at a certain point, it was a, a moment which I... I said, okay, I'm done with this, because in the moment in which I realized that what I was saying was basically going past the people, uh, the average person's understanding, uh, when you realize that a like uh, or or dislike um, arrived just for you know what the preconceived notion of, of those people were, you said you you have um, there is no need for you to interact anymore in here. Um, even if it, if you know, you know, you I received more likes than dislikes. This is not the point because I, 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 I had realized uh, at the point it was more myself needing to confront with others before checking my own. And, and at a certain point, when you when you realize that everybody's talking kind of another language, because you you went past that, and and there is no way to connect, or at least there would be, but. Um, what is lacked there is even the willing to, you know, the capacity of, of distinguishing the quality of the content. That creates problem, and this is why also why I cre I decided, for instance, to 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 try Schwerpunkt as as an option, and also talking for so long because I believe that um, there is a kind of a new stage you can bring this to. I mean, the idea of exposing also these uh, things you learn, and trying to make people aware of it. Like, a Schwerpunkt is objectively a very strange experiment at this point because nobody does so many videos for s such, uh, you know, s so many long videos in this way. It's, it's sometimes, I, I kind of waste objectively a lot of time if you, by certain standards, in a certain perspective. But um, I would like Schwerpunkt to be essentially a voice uh, you know, kind of an intimate voice, someone who is talking to you at a, a at a confidential level, saying, telling to you, look, that when you're going to go out there, you're gonna find this, and you don't have to be worried because this is how it works. And we've been there before, so we can't tell you. So this is the the real point of history. It's not even about the sheer knowledge; it's the sheer information. Today, for instance, I made this video that is it doesn't have an historical content, so I don't know how it will be received, or how many people will will like this or uh, I don't know what but um, I think sometimes it's where things start getting even more interesting because sometimes I I history topics are are important I try also in here to fill some gaps that I found on the internet in pop culture and so on about certain topics nobody discusses that I found to be extremely important and that we, we need think I think we should speak up uh, about um, but it's also this wider perspective of how to approach history and kind of debunking the idea that there is a kind of a fixed standard and and and, and, and on the contrary trying to to there is a need to to promote to incentivate to stimulate the autonomous this the criticism that's really important so even in, in the terms of reds what is that you have to read trying to answer this <laughs> this answer that I'm revolving around for more than half uh, an hour and a half I can't tell you 
I can't. I can't tell you what I read. Um, I had the luck to collect this huge amount of books I, I was talking about before that um, are a bit about, you know, the, 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 the really the quality ranges. There are so many. Um, I have entire um, encyclopedias in here. Um, I have monographies, I've got essays, I've got articles. I've got thesis, I've got many other types of publications, um, even if you take above, uh, the, the famous Osprey books that everybody says, well is Osprey good? Well, yeah, sometimes, especially the last publications, sometimes very good, however the quality can vary wildly, especially when you go back in time. But I, I would say th the most important thing is to have many varied books, because it's um, what we were saying before, it's not really about what you practically no, but it, it, it's also about what you know that that is out there. This is probably one of the greatest differences that that make uh, you know make you grow aware of reality. And many people get you know we all get into history essentially without initially without knowing how it is really like how uh, how much there is, and uh, we step into the darkness es essentially. Then when you start knowing how to cope with bibliography, with sources, and everything kind of changes because you realize that how deep that, that really is. Um, for instance, there is this other perspective. Is bibliography more important, historiography more important than sources? You know, what should I read first? Should I read sources? Should I read bibliography? This is also a very difficult question to answer. If we talk about the Middle Ages, I can't tell you that my personal inclination is to read sources first. I know that in certain countries there is a um, a tendency to basically um, uh, say that everything that has been written by a s uh, professor is more important than, than anything else, so you should read it first. Um, I think it's a pretty naive idea. Um, of course, as I was saying before, when you have a, you have a question that needs an answer, and someone has written about it, uh, it's it would be silly not to go check it. Um, but I think that the source is really the core of the uh, the point, especially if you want to do really something that is historically valuable in terms of because if it's if it's just learning history for pleasure, because maybe you're not a historian and just want to learn about it, it's fine. You can read read many books and building even a, an entirely bibliographical uh, knowledge but I think you're losing kind of most of the fun because the source is really something I personally even get often moved when I read sources like I have something within myself and say oh my god it's been, this thing has been written you know 700 years ago right? I'm assigning this and this speaks to me uh, really at a personal level because it's talking about uh, life just li the one I'm living now and it's saying extremely interesting things it gives me so many informations about that world it makes me understand so much so I believe that um, actually um, sources and historiography should always be learned uh, in pair in tandem um, you can't really uh, they should complementary each other essentially because um, it's unavoidable, especially when you're doing a very after research. You can't avoid to do so. But the source, in my opinion, is always the the uh, the core of history. But not just f from as obvious, evident, mythological reasons that you can't invent history without evidence. But really, um, because it gives you an extra sensitivity to to what history really is. Mm -hmm. uh, because I believe historiography at a certain level is confusing. I mean, reading books is fine. But sometimes, uh, y you know, obviously a good book should have a kind of clear, uh, a good ability of explaining what, what the sources of, 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 of those statements come from. But it's not always like that, especially when um, there is a disclosure. You basically have this... Um, author that writes about this and it tells you, you know, read these other books if you want to know where I got the information from and then it basically tells you his own story. But it doesn't get into the uh, into the detail of the sources. I mean, maybe he can, he or she can quote them uh, every once in a while where, you know, there is a more meaningful source and so on, but you, the problem there is that you don't really see what that person has done in, in strictly historical terms. I mean, that you don't understand whether you know what those sources are about. You can't get a grasp. There are 
brilliant. Also, it's very important to know how to write and to make yourself clear. It's very difficult to write a good history book, and to, you also have to have some, some skills in in uh, in in writing, in uh, in lexicon, in, in you know the idea of you know deliver delivering a concept also in a kind of an elegant, effective, um, um, punching way because. And that's also really a, really a problem. And also in here, different countries, for instance, have different traditions. For instance, Anglo-Saxon tradition is very, it goes very straight to the point. It's something I really like. It's very empirical sometimes. As continental Europeans, we tend to criticize that <laughs> because we feel that um, it's too kind of simplistic. But I personally like very much Anglo-Saxon historiography. It made me grow a lot, and especially given that I studied military history and coming from a country where military history is not really much studied, honestly. Um, I, uh, I obviously became a bit Anglo-Saxon myself in, in mindset um, for when it comes to, to certain things. Although I also have a side that I, I don't really show Schwerpunkt much because it's mostly related to the way I... Um, well, perhaps I do, but... Um, it's mostly related to what I do every day in terms of my studying, my learning. It, 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 now it's complicated to explain. So I would say everything is fine. I mean, sometimes people criticize Wikipedia, for instance. Uh, the English Wikipedia, when it comes to history, is um, unusual. Uh, it's usually very, very correct in many ways, and that can be a very, a very good guide for a an historical studying. I mean, I use it every time. Um, I get my information mostly from books, but you know, if I don't remember a name or a date, or I want to have a, this general basic idea of what what we're talking about, that is very very fine. Um, then um, the sources. Wh where do um, many people say? You know, where do I get sources? First of all, because um, okay, let's start start first from the studies because these are well. As you know, books are usually published. They they usually you have to pay for them. So that's pretty obvious. Some of them have to be bought, and they are expensive. Um, and 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 this is kind of bad because the last public, I mean, the most updated uh, bibliography functions really like that. There is a business behind it. It's fair because it's um, copyrighted material, and if you want to know about it, you should pay. Um, up to a very few years ago, there were lots of sites that now have been shut down. There were kind of paralegal sites. Uh, now I won't remember. Uh, I won't repeat their names, but um, I'm sure some of you have been acquainted to it. Um, once I was, um, um, uh, I knew one of them that was quite useful because there was a there was a professor at my university that had to make an exam of Byzantine history. Told me, you know, you know look, th there is no need. Maybe you know, make this uh, exam uh, using this book, and there is no need for you for to buy it because there is this kind of paralegal site. <laughs> that allows you to, and I got it from there. I know it's not very nice because objectively uh, it's a very moral thing to do, and I, I'm kind of, you know, I'm, uh, I, I felt a bit sad when they shut down those, um, those sites because the temptation was very high, naturally. But you have to think that if we start, you know, that people are not very interested in in history in general, and objectively history doesn't pay excessively much. Um, military history specifically, if you're interested in it, like just like me, is even uh, has even less. So people, you know, really make a very hard work uh, to to write these books and to provide them, you know, to to work on them. Also, think about people who make pictures and so on, I illustrations and so on. So it's kind of ugly and bad, honestly, to to steal that because that's what it is objectively with and um, so if you if you don't buy that book basically you're going to weaken increasingly the the book mark uh, you know the market that re revolves around that the topic and you're essentially damaging yourself because if you do so in the long run you will have even less and you will produce less and people will be less aware of it including including yourself so my question is not don't do it. Of course, there are, as I was saying before, many free books online that are uploaded. You can read, or some of them are very good, actually, and also relatively recent. Um, but then, if you want to read, uh, you can inscribe yourself to journals. Now, also buying a book. I, I usually don't buy books on the internet, but via via internet. But um, it's plenty of those. So just a few, you know. Uh, there's a. 
you know, there are so many good offers. I mean, for a relatively low cost, you can get uh, a huge library. And so I don't think it is um, such a problem. Then there, is, there are sites like Academia Edu, uh, Academia.edu, for instance, that uh, are uh, that are used essentially by scholars, by uh, students, by people who write things and they upload it, and they're usually free. So uh, at least from them, I mean, obviously, you you can't get a comprehensive um, library from from there because also articles have a very different uh, aim than uh, than books, uh, as as it's evident. But uh, one very precious thing in there is the bibliography. You know, if you read there, sometimes sometimes certain papers are are published only in in the bi bibliography line because they say, okay, let's at least um, you know publish this part, so that I don't publish my student uh, my my article that has to be that I, I wish someone paid for to read it. But at least I give that these people, other people, other researchers, other students, other scholars, I give them the bibliography in order to to get interested about you know to to research just like i did on this uh topic so that's extremely useful bibliographies are vital are essential and that's something you 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 understand chiefly when you you write a, a thesis because uh you're you're starting to get hungry for for such stuff and that's probably the moment in which you stop kind of collecting lots of different things without order and you start to concentrate instead of a more solidly structured um, a library on your own that uh, is even at least more you know uh, more dedicated more more specialized in, in some ways um, so uh, uh, from that uh, of course you can go search for these books it's not after all very difficult if you go to a library and uh, you're you know you not obviously public library I mean those kind of state libraries do those things where there is really a lot of people go to research and so on. You can easily ask for uh, for getting books, uh, also from other countries, and it's relatively cheap. Some 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 universities even, and certain libraries do it for free. Um, especially if you're a student in those institutions, they they they, they can do it very easily. There are uh, also several sites that you can inscribe to. Um, and basically through a uh, through the library you're inscribed to you can ask them these books and they're going to do it for free so it's really really easy to to get books really it's not that difficult I mean it takes time I know and it's uh, it's pretty boring sometimes but after all it's very quick just think about how it was like 30 years ago where people had to do everything photocopies printing and so on. It, it was a, a nightmare today we have the means we have let's use them because they they're it's definitely worth it especially if you want to build a lifetime of learning that's definitely uh, an option you have to take in into consideration that's probably the most difficult thing actually um mentally because people are lazy and i, I was also pretty lazy at the beginning i i didn't care I said oh my god i have to go to the library i have to go in get in line to search a book it's boring but objectively um at a certain point you need it i mean now i need it because i'm being paid for what I do, so it <laughs> it's not that I have many options. Um, if I if I don't really do it for the money, which I, I could even do without, but it, it's it's really the um, it's really the purpose that you're you know it's for history. I don't know how many of you really would I I would um, I don't know what I'd give. I mean if, I think history is something at this point more important even than individuals sometimes. If they told me you know now we're going to erase history, we're going to take you know like just like in a totalitarianism, we will tell you what to teach, wh what to learn, what to know, and so on. I would say I would fight. I would join the resistance <laughs> for just going to shoot the people who will. Be, and and I don't care. Uh, uh, I believe this is so important for our civilization, for our progress. And, and there is no way we can read and it's very sad to see in fact this um, kind of uh, you know double face for which you know our society now kind of praises naturally knowledge education and so on but if you look at the actual and and especially the ratio availability and uh, um, access that is done it, it, it's really it's very depressing because especially young people are not so interested about reading anymore they're not interested in reading anymore they they, they kind of say okay yeah th these things exist but why should we read them and that's why we should talk about history because we should make 
um, people understand how how really important that is. How many times it happens? Sometimes you know when you tell you know even when you date a, a girl and you you, you say you what, what what did you do and and uh, you, I say I'm a historian. <laughs> well, at that point, it's like you know you you always think the girl is thinking you are probably a beggar or something like that. You, it, she sees you under a bridge in some years soon because you think that history useless that uh, you don't make money with it. It's something that you know. Um, but uh, it's um, because many people just don't know it. You can't really blame them because objectively our society doesn't really doesn't really work much for it either. So I think also with Fairpunk that these videos are kind of um, um, they they have a moral meaning in some way. They they do they do have I, I don't know what's happening outside. The way no, I don't even care. It might be <laughs> the third world war, but uh, I, I I have to conclude my video. Um, and I I think the uh, there is this inherent uh, reason, and then reading can really expand into other fields. I mean, I as I was saying at the begin very beginning of the video, I you know reading you can't um, I'm personally uh, very selective with my reading even when I have free time I usually keep reading about hi sheer history as such there are other people were whose interested interests are, are much more varied in many ways so that they study I don't know literature languages and so I also like to practice languages as much as I can but I also don't have much time. But it's let's say that where people w w really leave with s studying so many things at once, doing other activities, playing instruments, making sport, and so on. I had to stop swimming uh, ever since I started university, and I I can't forgive myself for <laughs> having done it. Um, um, and I uh, I don't know. Um, the reason, uh, so reading, I, I don't know whether I answered the question. Um, I, I think not, because I, I actually discussed very few about reading. But let's say that uh, things you read and you get to learn are sometimes, uh, especially in this time in history, very varied. I mean, even if, okay, uh, I will say something stupid, you will forgive me, but if you switch the television on, consider that I don't watch television, but Sometimes there are certain documentaries online. Now, they, they, uh, I mean online, uh, you know, whatever you watch this documentary, sometimes they're silly and they're bad, but at least they're talking about history. And sometimes they tell objectively things you didn't know about. They might be very niche, very narrow, very kind of stereotypical, but sometimes you just didn't the, the s uh, didn't think of of the same topic from that perspective. Maybe you you even didn't know about it. So that's already a stimulus that can bring you to say, okay, well, let's go read about this. And why you go read about that? You already do a research. That means you do a bit of history uh, in the meanwhile. You go read, uh, you, you come across other things, you look at pictures, you get interested, and you start to ex kind of expand that your knowledge. It usually ends there, because I personally do it tens of times every day, but uh, most of the, br of the branches do, are, do not become root to, to anything consistent. But um, it's important sometimes even to to read and to know things you maybe at the beginning you say what, you know, what what am I going to do with this? But eventually they can turn out useful. And this is also why I I, I always advise to read so much also about other periods in history because there's a very uh, bad thing that is done in that I was talking to you about um, that doesn't even have to do with. Uh, with specialization in academic field, it's really an attitude that many people have. That is, they, they want to learn essentially only about a specific topic. Like, I don't know, I come from a certain country, so I want to learn just about the history of my country, and the rest uh, I don't care. Well, it's probably one of the most stupid things you can do uh, in the first place. Um, because wherever you come from, your country is what it is because of other countries. Um, so it, it doesn't make sense to to pretend, you know, to stick. And, and this happens very often. Uh, I mean, it's plenty of people who create history as a niche, for instance, for for their own even political agendas, their own narratives, and so on. And and they kind of even invent, indeed, certain certain narratives of history that are used as, you know 
actually non-historical things like um, uh, I for instance I'm telling you truth now I will open up I will say I'm I'm generally a conservative and I was let's say I'm, I'm mildly right wing um, I, I I can't s I don't like this idea of wings because I don't believe they exist I mean birds have wings <laughs> or not uh, or a airplanes have wings uh, but uh, they uh, I don't like this idea of being framed as so I I come from a world is I don't know many people associate humanities to to liberalism or to leftism or something like that but I, I'm definitely not in that uh, on that train uh, I actually I'm on, on no train I stay <laughs> I, I walk on my own somewhere uh, this person to to the to the countryside without in the wilderness um, I am but I, I do see that there is a lot of um, are a lot of people who are, uh, who like to st to basically uh, talk about history because they they furiously hate other you know because they want somehow somehow to to crystallize a view they have of their past as if that was something special nobody can touch. Mm -hmm. Uh, liberals and leftists usually do other things, and they, they try to to emphasize the the kind of um, the, the you know that how this doesn't exist, how there was nothing properly communitarian. Uh, also now there are also worse things that you know. Also in here it would be interesting to make a video on kind of the language because, for instance, in the in the in, in Europe, especially in continental Europe, uh, liberal means a very different thing than it means in the United States. And not because it's the same thing and it, it looked at two different approaches, it's literally two different things in political theory, in political history of these countries, and, and so on. So, actually, from this perspective, I'm a, I'm a liberal myself, definitely not a leftist. Um, and not a, not even a rightist. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, see, I never heard this 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 idea. But I I see that history is violently raped um, by anyone who actually wants to to take it in, and, and 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 this is very present um, to to an extent. You realize that most people actually think history exclusively from a political point of view. Sometimes, um, I I must say that history objectively is political um, and I don't mean it because this is many also in here many people hearing this phrase say oh my god you're probably one of those guys who get into politics uh, because got into history because of politics no absolutely not I mean that history is political because basically every single action we do or, or even single thinking we have has a political consequence on our society so it's very important how you look at history and on, on what I do on Schwerpunkt for instance is essentially to drive away from this um, attitudes in the sense that I, I try to tell history not just from a neutral point of view but also trying to stress the um, how you can't really put everything into discussion up to a certain point. I mean, there are certain things you can't discuss, but most of his uh, of the histor of historical awareness actually emerges from, you know, knowing that history doesn't stop to the narrative that other people told you. Personally, I, I have many faults, but there is one thing I'm extremely proud of, and I consider like a very positive thing of mine. It, ever since I can remember, I was never satisfied, for instance, with 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 explanations that our people provided to me and I wish everybody was like that because the point is that w when you start following someone else um, you basically give up your chances to have a, crit a critical um, you know a, a, an autonomous criticism a, a capacity of you know relationing yourself with reality in a way you can cope with it and this is essentially what many people do and I think the problem is much more complicated because this is not just about you know whether a person is evil or, or, or good you know the, the problem is that objectively the the way we we teach history in schools and how our society overall is historically educated uh, or better is educated historically um, is very low uh, it's very bad you know it, it people intrinsically don't understand history and understanding history is not just like understanding medicine like you know uh, only doctors can exercise medicine legally spe legally speaking so if you understand medicine yeah you can kind of get more aware of the diseases you have but you can cure yourself history is 
history is much more I history is a way you essentially decide to see the world through and and that changes everything I mean the the power that a historical awareness has probably in, the, in bettering society is enormous so when you read you don't just you, you shouldn't just think you know I, I read this because I it, it's it's saying okay it's the, the the right narrative I like you should also read things that you not necessarily looking at BS sources my, my advice is always look at source uh, you know studies at texts etc that are pretty neutral in the essentials and, and not in fact, that's why history is interesting because usually history if anything because there is an international community of, of scholars is you know a, a world where if you say something wrong it, that you're uh, you're gonna get criticized immediately so we we kind of managed to to create this um, optimum of kind of neutrality that in the past was not like that I mean history obviously is biased um, at all times even today but you know 50 years ago history was taught in very different ways 100 years ago uh, even more so you can understand that pretty clearly we arrived at a point in, in history in historiography w in which we we can really say very refined sophisticated things very very good thoughts and, and sometimes however this is um, in fact because of hyper specialization is driving away most of the people f most of the the, the audience for the public or you want to call them readers from from understanding it because it's getting it's getting too too detailed to to too, too narrow in a certain way so that's why I was advocating the need of um, of having more generalist historians out there because at a certain point you you it's as if you lo you lost the plot you know you can be uh, actually extremely uh, competent on a certain field but then you know nothing about the rest so you don't realize the kind of uh, also what the bigger question the bigger pictures are uh, I've met lots of historians for instance that are you know who believe that they are who knows whom because they that you know they are historians they they, they are so specialized they have such a day you, you talk with them five minutes about general history you realize that they're they don't understand anything and how can they understand the world if that's what they, they know so this is also the sad reality that many people who get into a specific career not just history like everyone they just do it for for egoistic reasons for saying ah I'm so special I, I was so successful I, I got these titles I'm so good I, I personally don't give a damn I don't even consider myself a historian if not philosophically obviously if someone asks me you know, what, what do you do with yeah I'm a historian but uh, that's the point I'm making I mean um, what is to be a historian someone who spends lots of time on re hopefully at least reading and, and, and reading is it's where it starts all from and you should therefore giving yourself uh, a diet of books that is valid for um, forming you at 360 degrees and it's difficult to achieve <laughs> because in fact as we were saying before there is no way to 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 achieve complete awareness but uh, definitely the more you know the more at least you tend towards that direction and the better you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna make so I don't truly really know how to um, how to conclude there are so many things that that would be worth saying so um, mm, oh yeah I didn't finish that um, you know we, we talk about how where you can find bibliography and so on uh, talking about the sources that are probably the most important thing at this point where do you find sources because this is also a question you know what um, well primary sources are definitely naturally th there are various types of sources um, I'd say that in, in our society it's much easier to to, to access um, historiographical sources um, like you know you know the ancient authors usually uh, so like you know Cicero is fi found translated uh, digitalized everywhere but Cicero is not the whole the whole the whole story <laughs> it would be you know it would be kind of interesting if Cicero was the whole history but but um 
D no actually it would be pretty sad but it, I love Cicero however mm -hmm. there is something fascinating in this hypothesis um, but um, when it gets to the Middle Ages for instance um, you say but where do we find sources because objectively very difficult to do well it depends also in here um, certain sources uh, usually the most important medieval sources are also digitalized and so on there, there is the um, uh, the Monumenta Germania Historica, for instance, that are those for the Holy Roman Empire, for Germany, for Italy, they are very evil. I haven't read much of uh, French sources of chronicles, not, not even, I, th I think British sources are, but you know, they're all out there. Actually, all these sources are, um, have been, uh, dr you know, that between the, the d essentially during the 19th century, there's been a huge, um, all over Europe, practically, a, a huge um, um, I research about all the medieval sources practically were available, and they've been digitalized now because these were texts, in fact, of the 19th century. So they're valid, philolo philologically speaking. I mean, yeah, some of them now during the 20th century were other manuscripts that were found, so there were different versions, also different, you know, commentaries and and so on. But essentially, the sources are those ones. The, no, the problem is that um, many people don't even know where to start in terms of, of of medieval sources because the problem of medieval sources is that they are they start to be so many already from the the, the 13th, 14th century that um, you don't quite have a guide to tell you you know look at this other one. You know, if you for instance, if you study a uh, an ancient battle. A beautiful massive Hellenistic battles, you know, I don't know, be those ones between the Romans and the Macedonians or something like that. You get essentially those two or three sources if you're lucky. So everybody knows that those are the only sources. There are naturally so many other things you have to add it, but in the essentials that's what you need to, to know. When it gets to the Middle Ages, where every city, every principality, every uh, wrote something on its own, and uh, the world history is so overly complicated because these entities were so many, um, politics, uh, you know, the, uh, there w was a, such a, a great political fragmentation. Well, there it becomes difficult even to know what you have to search for. So now we don't have the time to explain how to cope with that problem, but let's say that in general, uh, a good advice is still to talk, to start reading some of them, to start um, looking because on, on the internet you essentially find most of the information that is related to those sources proper. You know when they were written by whom, um, if there is a, usually there is a good coverage of this and then you start reading them and you start confronting them with others and you can't start like that objectively for the Middle Ages perhaps it's better to start from the bibliography sometimes because that's kind of the most um, evident thing but I give you it's a bit difficult it's not so easy to, to do it um, in actually most of what I say in Schwerpunkt it's not because I studied the sources because that takes a, a lifetime indeed it's it's just because I read certain studies were based on them and I'm kind of making a leap of faith towards the orders uh, and accepting essentially what they they interpreted the source like and and, and that's pretty much it but uh, otherwise it's kind of complicated and there is also what I call a general logic in its certain affairs. I mean, if you for many years you start reading um, these books, you participate to debates, you study certain things also at university, but not necessarily, and you um, you you get acquainted constantly with this stuff. You travel, you read, you you get informed about places you visit. Um, you start acquiring, um, especially if you kept this kind of idea of having a general understanding about a bit about everything, not just about a single context, but at wall, looking at the whole picture, um, you start getting even a sort of, not really of sixth sense, but you start having a kind of uh, a solid amount of information to kind of expect that certain things are in, in, in a certain way. Uh, the things that hints towards uh, head towards a certain direction, and and, and that's important because uh, the great difference between, in fact, a, a rookie and a, a, a veteran in this sense is you. Um, at the beginning, you you really feel, you really sense that you lack this um, 
understanding of, of what the sheer structure w really was. I mean, understanding, for instance, that the power of, s of a certain political entity in a certain time, something objectively different. I mean, uh, when you start studying history, it's as if you know you had this map with all these the states with these various colors, and you said, um, you know, okay, uh, this looks like that, and probably yeah, this has access to to this um, I don't know to this sea and borders with these other countries, and maybe you know something about those countries, but you don't really have a, a clear idea. The more you progress, and the more you look at this that map, and you understand, and you uh, beyond that map, you see so many things. That before you didn't you didn't conceive and you start realizing and looking at it. I've personally, for instance, I have a very uh, visual approach to history. I mean, I I, I I really visually see I really see mentally certain things, certain dynamics, and have a very fluid uh, picture of how certain things work. Um, studying history is also, uh, and I said it many times on, on Schwerpunkt, um very important because it breaks down your your prejudices or stereotypes about cer how certain things work. For instance, uh, it's very difficult for people today to understand what the Middle Ages were because they most people today can't reason um, out of a 19th century nation state perspective. Um, which means, you know, wasn't there a central government? I mean, wasn't there, you know, how this the, the systems work probably they, 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 there is dif difficulty to understand things like legal uh, I mean juridical particularism or you know elective systems or it's uh, also um, you know dynastic questions how these powers basically stood on their feet and by the way the way they did I spent countless hours on Schwerpunkt trying to make people understand that, you know, centralization is something, for instance, that didn't start into the modern age. It already existed in every kind of s society by, to a greater or lesser degree. But, um, in fact, uh, realizing how this states uh, worked, it's kind of interesting. I mean, I, I must say that, especially studying military history, you understand that much more clearly because with military history you don't stick to the ideal to the abstract of political theory and so you really look at how these things worked materially um, I mean mo mobilizing an army or trying to have a control in a certain region you see it how it, it, it really was when when you start studying military history the various campaigns the various battles you, you realize what um, what does a ratio that ratio of strengths really were really was about and and all of the sudden it all kind of makes sense mm -hmm. it, it it takes some times so, you know it, for, for me it took me some years for instance to achieve this it's, it's still something I'm perfecting of course and I hope that if I will live long enough I will uh, uh, reach certain degrees of, of awareness da -da -da. and it, that's that's in fact what it kind of strikes you with learning history is that you looking back at how you thought before you you realize that it's not that you reason badly on the contrary maybe you you knowing less you even had a, a made a greater effort to understand certain, certain things you were much more you know you understand even understood even the essentials in a kind of a better way you could imagine but simply there were things you you weren't aware of because you simply didn't know them and this is the problem with information in practice it's not about really the things you know how well you know a certain thing is 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 uh, what matters is that you know that that thing existed in the first place that's why i tell you read as much as possible in terms of also things that have not strictly to do with that specific thing and not to become a, an ultra specialist because that ho widens your mind because otherwise all you will do is to become yeah a professor with kind of a good life and so on but uh, that writes things that uh, you know also professor's life is uh, are not so you know uh, good as they were before by the way so it's not going to also be something extremely funny you're just going to write these tiny articles uh, that will be published in in a in a journal in a, in a, in a public that nobody will ultimately read because nobody cares try to to do something more in my opinion for the people for instance you you teach to um, try to not just to enforce your own narrow view but try to to present the, the students with something that can be 
useful for them. Um, I I've done some lessons sometimes now in uh, yeah I was just like it, it was because I was participating in certain conferences but it wasn't really anything and, and, and that's what you want to see is that you want someone who you know it's fine you present all these guys who wrote uh, about you know that their specific research their article their paper and so on but so if I people just yawn stay there because they've been forced because they've been called because that's friend that's talking now or the professor asked them to be present and then you know give them something better because ultimately what you're going to publish in that article is going to stay in a book L you know if you really want to attract people just make that lesson something funny um, something uh, engaging something that uh, can challenge also the, the people view on certain things try to uh, that's in my opinion what really matters so and, and this is so important because it, it goes both ways I mean it, you learn as much from it than, than uh, the people learn from you arguably you, you, you learn much more <laughs> than, than than other people but in, in that specific um, case but um, this is also a very important part of a history is to make it human because history is not a cold thing that's been written somewhere like this highly um, I don't know stern and um, solemn thing that history is you know uh, something untouchable and uh, history is deriving pra practically from the people to, to ind from the individual interests and that's what pushes history I mean what, what do we research things for object it's because we are curious and uh, and curiosity is what makes uh, i believe it, it's what what's at the base of civilization because if nobody cared if everybody thought not just that history is something stays there and someone else is working for you 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 don't do any progress as a person you don't you don't grow you you remain there who was Cicero was said that not knowing history mean, r means to remain a, uh, a child for for your your own life this is true this is true uh, it is true uh, you realize that when we talk also with people that are older than you and never got interested in these things you realize that they missed some of the best that uh, there are so many things that naturally in life kind of look more uh, more interesting and funnier but I would argue that if you are a if you're enough educated you can enjoy life more I mean that same time you spend on books is uh, something that's gonna make you um, enjoy even more your your travels, your relations, your uh, the things you do aside from that in your life. And, and, and as I was saying before, I believe that you know if, if what it concerns me. You know, um, I I give much more attention to to other things in my life than than university and research and all this stuff because I believe that's what that's what really what life is meant for. Um, in the end, in the end, uh, but history in this sense is is an instrument also for living a better life, not just to make a career, not just to, wi which you know, with history most likely you won't, <laughs> but um, it's um, it's so important. So mm, my suggestion is really to read no matter what, and obviously have certain strategies when it comes to you know, w especially when you are actually into a career and you have to make some choices that you you have naturally to to find to select uh, to 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 have a, sch a schedule and then to to save time for something to you know to reason economically also in learning but at the same time uh, leave learning open don't let uh, for instance don't let other people tell you what you have to do it's better for you to 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 make a mistake your own way than than making the right thing because someone has told you to just to passively do it so this is also pretty arbitrary as, <laughs> as an advice because you know, sometimes people are give you good advices, uh, advice, but it's um, sometimes uh, until you don't see certain things, you, you can't understand it. And I must say that the probably the greatest progress I've made, and this is also what philosophy of science actually tells us. Sometimes we talk about Popper and so on, uh, is that you actually achieve in terms of progress much more when you fail than when you succeed because uh, paradoxically failure um, gives you a, a much a wall, uh, at least in, in, in relative terms it gives you much more information to, to 
considering the point you were before, and then succeeding immediately. Because once you succeed, you just feel proud about it. Oh yeah, it's so funny, it's so easy. And then you you lose time in the meanwhile. Instead, if you are constantly under you know a, a decent amount of pressure, um, you you know what what the odds are. You know what what it takes to 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 go on. So this is really really important in many ways. Um, and also, um, don't I would say. I would say obviously should never give up because that's something that uh, I think it's valid for for all our lives for how um, you know it, it doesn't make sense I, I believe to uh, I personally studied history because I I loved it not because I calculated what I would do with it that can be considered as a you know as a mistake but up to now I, I must say I don't regret um, uh, you know, and I I think I I did, uh, I did good for me because that's something I really love and I really like, and and I started make uh, a certain Schwerpunkt essentially for transmitting this idea of that there are certain things that are, you know, society is not this cold thing that they want you to to think about that it's all about success, it's all about you know, being cunning and, and s uh, smart and tricking the others and passing on, because that's not how life really works. Um, and even for winners, they're allegedly allegedly winners, but eventually they, they kind of have a miserable life on their own as well. So it really depends. It's not so dichotomic. It's not so uh, easy to, to understand. And that's what history teaches you, mostly, that things you got used to seeing a certain way because maybe you heard that w that narrative from someone else actually they're not really so and that there are so many enigmas that are you know that really needs just someone to try to to solve them uh, and and to add up to kind of hum human civilization in, in the process um because otherwise you realize that history doesn't make sense if you f think that history is just a, a story that uh, every idiot can learn by heart and then that's it you probably most likely don't you're not very acquainted to history uh, are you i mean um we, we all we've all been there because we've all been ignorant about history you know <laughs> we're not born with historical uh, awareness incorporated but um we do uh, we do have a chance to understand it. So even if you're not a professional, don't don't you know that you can do really much better than than a professional in that field. As long as you stay open, you s you keep yourself curious, and you you are able to make your own choices towards um, uh, towards what you really makes you interested. Um, and that's what I would say. I it's fine, and you you will realize uh, along the path that this thing kind of fuels itself this is what it's really cool about it um, it takes a lot of thought it is true but what doesn't take it objectively in life um, you, you never gain something without losing something else objectively but what is cool about knowledge at least in, in so many other fields so not just in history but even in history it's um, it's particular at least in the way it happens you realize that it, it's going on that, that certain knowledge certain wisdom will come kind of by itself there is no manual that's why also today i had so many difficulties to tell you know you have to read this this and that because um there is no easy a you have to find it yourself you have to find it by yourself there are certain tracks obviously that you have to to look at that you can uh, we can approximate saying this is historiography and this is what other people have gone um, where people have gone so far, but then there is the source, and, and when you look at the source, you say, "Well, but this is just me and the source." Yeah, the source and me. I mean, we are here, and I have to figure out what this practically means, and it's very difficult. But you have a know-how, an experience, um, uh, a you know, a perspective that nobody else has. So. The way you combine that knowledge with all the knowledge you've accumulated in your life experience that is unique is something that nobody can have. It's, it's something so precious, in fact, that is a bit the sap of history in itself. 
it's the way you can read through those things it's the way you can be intelligent and um, that's also difficult I repeat it but it, it's still something that 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 remunerate that repays you so much and and sometimes you will say you know where do I got this thinking from because um, we are used like this you know the, the idea of saying you know we need this clearly defined know-how that you know you can put into a manual and uh, but it's not like really how it works and, and not even our mind is supposed like to work like that and uh, you realize you're acquiring certain knowledge even without uh, without acknowledging that you know without um, sensing that because it's a long time mm, it's a long-term process and it stands in a very different way but and by the way um, another very important thing is um, to write is also important also to write um, I would say a diary or uh, certain notes because sometimes and this amazes you you you're amazed by your former self I mean to me it happened something like this before studying uh, at university I was generally you know decently acquainted with certain things in, in history and I had shaped kind of my own view of, of the thing especially when I was in high school I kind of grew aware about uh, I got my my ideas and and I must say that when I went to university I, I kind of met with so many different thoughts and perspectives that I said okay my god it, this is not really how I, I thought it was it's much more complicated and objectively I went far into those things and 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 I uh, kind of acquire also other convictions uh, I uh, other beliefs because I especially there, there's this kind of iconoclastic tendency like saying you know um, you know we ha we have to erase everything as as we thought it before it is something kind of good because objectively there are certain approximations especially historiography that need we need to get rid of or at least certain perspectives or mm, that that we 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 have also from popular culture and so that, that are still pretty much alive and do influence our view of history. Well, at that point, I kind of changed my mind on certain things, and then after some years, like when it was I had, I I I looked back at this process. I looked back sometimes of what I was thinking before I going to university, what it was I, I was knowing, you know, a few now in last years, and what I was thinking now. And I realized by keep reading history and so on that actually many things that I had in mind at the beginning were actually pretty actually pretty good. And I was um kind of surprised by saying, Oh my god, I, I didn't have a uh you know, a kind of a scientific experience. I hadn't gone to university, but I already had got something on my own. It was valuable. So this is important because you see it everybody can have a a good idea everybody can contribute positively to to the historical debate as long as obviously it's within reasonable and it it makes sense and it is something that objectively starts from a from a thorough consideration so not not just you know an opinion thrown out there um you know, when when you go to university, sometimes you uh, I will make a video surely on this. But you know, list of the the the, the stupid things you hear, but not just from the students, also from the professors and our people you meet now. Um, but uh, it, it's really important because um, even people who are not professional historians actually have their own right idea sometimes and. And and even historians should be a bit more open to these perspectives because sometimes historian historiography gets uh, it's very narcissistic. It kind of falls in love with itself, and then that's where it loses its um, its uh, its 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 wealth. Let's say it, it, its value in essentially sticking to a dogma. Or stick. Uh, obviously, it doesn't happen quite often. In, in this time in historiography, we're actually the other way around. Uh, we're able to deconstruct almost everything, and with very good reasons for it. But still, even reading the older authors before, I advise you to read these older books that get published and and so on. And they um, 
sometimes you realize even very old authors had actually pretty good points and made sense you know after all if historiography progressed on on the shoulders of other people who wrote before you so even now this is also an, the other great problem is that i don't know when my uh, professors were young um at university there, there were objectively very uh, much fewer books that had been written um than today uh, and 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 today, as students, w as learn, as scholars, etc., we have a a, a a much greater problem to to cover everything. Uh, one of my greatest problems right now, also with my other colleagues, is that sometimes there is even too much that has been written. You know, sometimes even to make a point in a on a PhD research, you have to spend a whole year looking at the by the historiographical perspectives that exist in that field. Sometimes you simply don't have time to cover everything because sometimes those three years or whatever you're given for a PhD are uh, kind of um, would be enough just to, to make a you know a, a point of what the bibliography is. I fortunately don't have that. Uh, the bibliography is. is you know, says about the topic. Fortunately, it's not my case because I, <laughs> I, I decided to to choose a topic that uh, has a very few written on it, but also for certain reasons that can create more problems than, than advantages here. Uh, <laughs> but um, this is our, let's let's forget about this for now. Um, but um, at this this is this produces a sort of disorientation because you don't know. You know, is it important? What you you have to go check. Because objectively, it's it's very kind of also um, professionally unethical for a historian to write things that you know without having heard what other people have to say. Um, but at the same time, there's still sort of instinct that comes from within you that is ultimately what what drives you and what what pushes you and what gives you the that extra quality that it takes to to get the work done, and that answer essentially your question because by the way uh, even uh, when you study the sources you, r you realize that uh, people wrote them and were actually posing themselves the same questions you were doing right now I mean uh, even indirectly but um, yeah it's true sometimes they they knew so much they didn't let us uh, know but it's uh, that's also meaningful as historical datum because it tells you what the mentality was at the time but in general you know, humans look at history, especially when they write for for someone who is coming next, as a way that, um, in a way that is actually pretty similar in time. I, thinking about the twentieth century, also now the twenty first century has just begun. But um, uh, looking at the twentieth century, for instance, there is a great um, a disconcerting disorientation sometimes because we produce the 20th century produces so many sources like n no other century did in history and the main problem now is the quest is answering the question will ever be able to make a to actually write a history of the 20th century because that's really the problem i mean we have so many sources at this point uh, that n who will realistically be able to sum them up at a point I mean, you can't. You can't objectively. You you start losing the, the, the opportunity of doing it already from several centuries before. But the 20th century is a, is a mess. So one problem now that is very important and is being reflected also in our society and so on is that we kind of lost a a track. You know, it, it, it and it has pros and cons because evidently this is something negative because there is a sort of um, of um, I would say existential um, malaise or dismay, uh, you know, a, a shock and uh, dismay. Sorry, um, because we don't know essentially what this is about, and don't think that other people in history didn't didn't think like that. On the contrary, uh, this is perhaps uh, even a two. Uh, narcissistic view on, on my own. Uh, the point is, uh, on our own, I mean to believe now it's our problem and that others didn't have such problems. People had other problems in the past actually, not even minding 
so much about what what history would have been told like you know many, much more serious problems but on on the other hand and i think it, this is something you can also bet on even economically speaking and this will produce many different branches in in in, in, in our world in historiography and so on it's the idea that we have the opportunity now to rewrite many things from scratch or better not from scratch because history is not something you can really uh, twist as you want because you shouldn't twist at all you know you should always follow and listen but at the same time you you have the opportunity now to to try to reconsider the whole thing as a wall that is it uh, that is paradoxical because now we have enormous difficulties to do it but it, it's still something that can gives you the the overall can give you the the overall answer for where we're going we're heading to as a society because history has this inherent civic um, importance you know history is the way we look essentially at the society we we also live in we all live in in history um, continuously because the way we you know we, we think about it, it's already passed so we we analyze it continuously history is not just something that happened uh, many uh, years before it, it, it's something that existed uh, at all times in so many ways and it keeps existing it will keep existing and so on so the main problem here is looking at history once again not falling into the same old thing you know yeah everything has got so complicated we just need hyper specialists let's look at history as something more comprehensive something that and how we should look at history not still insisting on the fact that you have to learn that specific date that specific event that must be known naturally but must be observed um, beyond the number beyond the name and with with a with a narrative that you can't do without uh, naturally, but that has to be as kind of um, less BS as possible. Now we have the this is a beautiful moment, uh, a perfect moment in history, but we can't do it because we're essentially deconstructing almost everything. So this is the this is the the natural consequence. We will need an answer. The problem, though, is that this answer has to be given in a concerted effort i mean it, you can't do it as a single thinker as a single historian you have to start reasoning collectively in historical terms which is something that in part obviously we do we will we're already uh, been been doing in a certain measure but uh, now is kind of more difficult to achieve because it's somehow this the history of everybody in, in 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 many ways even thinking about how the the world is getting connected interconnected in some way so for instance now the, this global history perspectives are, are kind of um very in vogue i would say but we have a problem for instance when we study the medieval times the relations between europe and china now that's something that was actually very very intense at the time and it's often overlooked the problem now is however where do we get a scholar today that is both expert on European history and on Chinese history of the 13th century that's a big answer uh, you, uh, you have to give that is a big question for it requires a big answer and we we need to to build to be able to build this and to at least to pave the road for this further development because that's something that is ultimately not going to help us as a know-how in the future also to to structure our societies in a certain way to make them functional um to avoid conflict to avoid uh, attrition to try to make uh, everyone living in a decent decent way um the also <coughs> Excuse me, I drink a little. This is. Um, I think I'm exhausting my voice <laughs> at this point. Um, 
But I, I think you got the point. I mean, history can't be uh, thought as just, you know, that thing, that boring thing you learn at school, because objectively history is usually very boring uh, when you, when, uh, when you, when it's taught at school, because it's not history, it's just a kind of weird condensated synthesis of so many things that would require a much deeper understanding, much deeper, um, uh, you know, attention. But at the same time, it's something we have to get used to 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 think at collect uh, together. I would say not collectively because collectively sounds so kind of Stalinist. <laughs> uh, that you know, um, you know, together as thinking being uh, as rational being because. And we have lots of problems. This, um, this is something I address every time. For instance, I, I believe uh, now this is my opinion naturally, but um, I think I have some historical ground for for this. Is I I, tr I strongly believe in the European Union, in theory, which means I believe Europe should become something like the United States of Europe, something like that. Um, and there is this great problem that uh, we have in Europe that instead of um, aside from the the European institutions that you know the Euro European Union institutions that are so. I don't even know. I mean, sometimes. We'll, but okay, let's leave aside this. But I, I think you got my what I mean about it. But it's really about the people, who live into it. I mean, we should be able, even in a federal optic, that in perspective, we should be able to come together. To talk about certain things, and what you see in Europe is that still we're we're, we're tearing each other apart. Um, in many ways, we're and this is happening in in some measure also in the United States that figure as uh, as a very big system, we're very diverse within it, and, and there is this major crisis if you want in the West, and I think history can can help solve this problem if we are mature enough, if we are um, responsible enough and honest enough to have the courage also to to tell history the way not we wish it was from an individual perspective because you know we but really looking at, at a broader perspective altogether I think we have uh, the, the moral duty to do it and it, it will save us probably I, I think history is one of those things that um, are so really as in terms of know-how are so strategically un, un, underestimated and, and overlooked and in fact, it, it's not a surprise that you know very authoritarian, strong authoritarian regimes will want you know their uh, they they kind of model the shape the mind of their people in the way they they please, and that's obviously negative. We should be able to do it in a democratic fashion. That saying, you know, we have to look at history together and objectively look at it for what it is. And given a common explanation, because I'm sure there will be a common European school one day. So what would do we teach uh, in our European school? How we will be able, for instance, to um, to refer to certain characters like I don't know uh, Julius Caesar or, or or Attila or or Charlemagne or or or, or Charles V or or um, or Napoleon? How how we will be able to to tell this to our children, to our grandchildren as well. Um, this is a challenge. This is a challenge because uh, today we have very different views on it. And uh, there are people who don't only, you know, one thing is catching up with, you know, what we already know. One other thing is actively pushing backwards. And uh, there, there are many phenomena that culture is being there, you know, in my opinion, uh, right now are very regressive in, in our in our societies that do not do any harm, do, do not nothing but harm, um, and this comes really from from both ways. Uh, I think there is no, mm, there is no even uh, this is pretty transversal politically speaking. I don't think at this point it has to do even with political ideals because um, uh, also in there, as especially as a military historian, I consider them always kind of kind of a farce in, in many ways. I, I believe the problem is inherently structural and has to do in great part with the way we are educated and we look at the history. So uh, this is a big problem we have to solve and we, we have to act quickly because uh, it's not that we lack the, the potential for doing it. 
I mean, there, there are certain, you know, it, it's much more difficult, it will be much more difficult for certain countries who are so aggressive in, in mindset and in action to, um, to, to eventually to explain that the narrative that up to now that they, they have told to their own people when these people will start to wake up. In our in our world, instead, uh, we are we we already have the the good solid historiographical tradition that that has made already so much. We need to add up to that. We need to to follow on. We we have to pick up the light, collect the legacy and and um, reinforce and to make our Western world to be a new driving force, also intellectually, culturally, morally, and 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 showing this. Um, and not in an exclusivistic way, but showing you know the advantages of of such approach, and 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 showing the rest of the world that that the history is, is is a common good we have, that it's too precious to be wasted um, in in this kind of uh, sectarian the division, this kind of stupid uh, you know narrow bigoted views of of our own past that that are still there are r resurgent in in many ways in many places and and sadly uh, among all of us sometimes in part i think it's it's something that goes to the individual level sometimes we like to point the finger saying oh that's to get the bad guy but it's actually ourselves it's actually ourselves in many ways um and we have to react uh, in my opinion so this is perhaps the 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 the, the, the thing that really makes me wonder because sometimes you realize wh when you have a certain awareness about um, you have awareness about certain things you it's as if the world went away that you know it's like when you're trying to, to drive something and it, it goes in a way that it, you don't want it you have to pull it from the other side because it, it, if only people knew more they would realize how important this is and it would kind of Put a brittle uh, to to their to to society and try to to, to pull it into a, a healthier direction. But at the same time, I think, a bit pessimistically, that society at this point is evolving in a way we can't control, and that humans actually are leaving since several millennia at this point I into a system that we can't fully control, uh, especially from an individual point of view. And that even even what they act uh, jointly, collectively, there is still a kind of a you know attrition factor that basically creates a uh, a shift uh, towards their actions uh, from which that society cannot recover anymore. But at the same time, I think history is so powerful that it can really do much, and it's much I uh, and to educate people actually is is much easier than it seems. I mean, it takes definitely a lot of effort, a lot of commitment, um, but it, it's still, it's still feasible. It's not something uh, inherently unreachable or difficult. It, it it just takes awareness, and 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 the more we talk about history, the more we can achieve that. In my opinion. So okay, today went a bit uh, straight, a bit philosophical. It's a pretty long video etc. But I hope that we got to one point that was interesting. I don't know how much I've been helping now with the question that I, I, I was asked, but um, uh, this is not over. Obviously today, I, I admit it, it was too lazy. I was preparing something about <laughs> the, the condottieri today and um, it was a lot to know and today I was a bit tired so I prefer to to just ramble about this stuff, but sometimes I think, as I was saying also in the ar that other video, um, on uh, that when I make the point on the channel, is that you, you know, even these videos are kind of useful in some way. I mean, they can help, bro broadly speaking, even the reasons that we're trying to explain today. So why not, every once in a while, making a video of this kind, and I will definitely keep doing them. Um, as I said before. We will talk about um, sources, bibliography, university. Today we talk about a bit of everything, so I kind of anticipated some certain things, but we will we'll go in into a deeper detail at that point um, again. So for now, I just hope that you enjoyed this video, and I, if you did, please share it 
otherwise leave a like or subscribe to my channel if you're interested in my upcoming contents and for now um, I thank you heartily for listening to me I wish you a nice time and see you next time bye